Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Hope you guys are having a wonderful time. So today we're going to be doing the Path of Exile 3.24 Righteous Fire Chieftain campaign run. If you guys have played the Juggernaut version or the Inquisitor version, you'll know exactly how this works. But for people who haven't, let's go ahead and get started. So you want to go ahead and click this Chieftain League starter build. Now this will be updated, but nothing will really change for you guys. It's mainly for endgame stuff, so don't worry too much about it. All you do is hit the copy URL button here. Then on the import over here, you're going to just import and then you're going to get everything that I'm basically going to be doing. Now, there may be some tiny nuances while I'm playing through. Don't overthink them. It's just because I kind of I'm going to be going a little bit quickly. But basically, you can see here there's the level one to 20 where you can see the Path of Exile skill tree progression here. Then if you look at the skills, you're going to find the same thing. Lots of detailed information here. So don't forget, if you're confused at all, just pause the video and just kind of look through it. Um, then over here under the items, we have the exact same thing. So you're going to do this. And as you get higher level, you're going to drop down the gear sets, drop down the gear sets and etc. Furthermore, this build is going to come with a custom loot filter designed for the campaign. So I'm going to show you how to get that as well. Under here on the loot filter, you're just going to click this which is gonna take you right over here. Then under right here where you see 3.23 RF Inquisitor Jug, this might be changed, but it's gonna be the one with basically the most copies, so you know exactly which one to get. Um, this is the one you want. Remember that Chieftain is still a Marauder and Juggernaut is also a Marauder. And since this is just a campaign run, this filter is going to be totally valid, do not worry. All you do is hit the follow button. I'm not sure exactly where it is, but it's somewhere on here for the follow button. And then when you're in game here, You'll be able to go over to the game refresh and you can see the filter right here with that being said we're going to go ahead and get started there is one unfortunate thing with this build where we are going to want to mule before people go a little crazy i don't want to play another class it takes about five to ten minutes and it actually helps you out with your next character and we'll talk about that in a second so before we get into the muling let's go ahead and make sure we open the path of building and the first thing we want to do is there's this weird little search string here. You wanna make sure you copy this. The reason you wanna copy this is we're gonna use this to put it into the vendor so that we can actually find early gear that, that's gonna help our build out. So let's get started. Okay. We are gonna start by creating a new character. So we're just gonna make our affliction character for right now, it doesn't really matter. And we're gonna go ahead and make our witch. Okay, then you can make sure that you're on the filter, and we're going to get started. Now again, so the purpose of the witch in this is we're going to be playing a marauder, which is typically played as more of like an attack, you know, attack build. I'm up in your face, I'm angry, raw, right? But we're trying to play it as a caster. Marauder, unfortunately, doesn't really get access to these caster gems, and the reason I prefer to play it as a caster is it's much easier to do the transition into Righteous Fire in Act 2 than if you were to be, like, you know, using a two-handed weapon, scaling physical, and then doing a hard respec into fire, right? So by doing this early, it just kind of sets you up for success. Almost. Okay. And you'll notice that this iron ring dropped with a weird color. That means you want to save that. You only need two of these, but more of them will help. Nothing really too big, so don't worry. So we're just going to take that iron ring here, and we're going to put it in our little tab here. Okay. Now, we only have three wisdoms, so the chance of us being able to buy something is not high. We're also going to go ahead and start with rolling magma. If you don't like rolling magma, take a look at the skill POB. You'll notice that there's a holy flame totem set up. You can use that instead. Expect it to be a bit slower though. You can also use both of them. So nothing highlighted, so we're gonna move on. You could also check over here if there's anything that highlights, but I typically skip this part. Also gonna sell this blue item here. You wanna make sure that you do not identify blue items in the early act unless you think they're going to be an upgrade the reason for this is we need these transmutation shards that we're going to get later Just like my sisters upon the pyre. now if you want to take it slow kill all the mobs there is no problem with that because we're not going to be playing this character very long i'm not really going to focus on that 
So I'm also going to slap in the rolling magma. We don't really have to worry about the fireball. Something very important to note here is your rolling magma. You do not want to level this rolling magma. I believe you can level it one time, but you might get screwed over on int requirements. So for the purpose of this, I will not be leveling the rolling magma at all. If you right click the rolling magma, it will then turn, it will basically permanently stop showing up here. But if you do that, you might forget to level it up when you're on the Marauder. So just pay attention to your rolling magma. I'm just gonna leave it alone for now. I feel like I'm going the wrong way here. I'm definitely going the wrong way. Let's sneak over this way. Now, there's a really a pretty high chance that you're going to die when you enter Mudflats, kind of like how she's spoiling right now. Mudflats, the Roas, are kind of obnoxious, and with the new league, if you make the Roas even stronger, there's a very good chance you're going to be dying a couple times. Doesn't really matter that much unless you're playing HC, right? But just one thing to note. So we're just going to tap this waypoint, and then we're going to move on to the next zone. Right here. And this is actually... We're actually pretty much halfway done already with the character. I'm just gonna smack this pack of mobs over here. Maybe I get some drops. Not really. There's no harm in killing the pack of blue mobs because getting some, some starting gear does not hurt at all. All right, we need three of these. So there's one. Put another point into damage here, just going into spell damage. Now this rolling magma, as annoying as it seems, will get so much better very quickly. You just need a couple of support gems to really make it feel much better. The primary reason for this is we're going to get proliferation. And proliferation makes it so that when you hit a mob, if you roll an ignite, it will just create a circle damage over time. And that will pretty much do most of the clearing for you. So the, the aiming on it is not nearly as important later. Okay, so that's where we need to go. So we need to find one more. Let's see, where are you at? For people asking questions, I'm currently recording a YouTube run. We're going to be doing the whole campaign. It's going to be a while. So the chat activity is going to be, unfortunately, to a minimum. Okay, here is our last row and nest. Try not to get surrounded like that. That's typically how you die. Okay. So all we're going to do now is literally... Grab that, that little thing there. So we're going to make it to the waypoint. Go back to town. Grab some skill gems. Check the vendors again. Then we're going to go do one more zone, and we're done. And the witch is gone forever. Forever. All right. So we're going to start. We're going to go back to Lion Eyes Watch. We're going to come over here, and we are going to pick up our... Flame Wall, very strong, and Frost Blink. Then I'm going to go type in this little search string. Look at that. We got boots with intelligence. We we want those. So we're going to snag those, and we're going to give those to the Marauder. Over here, you can do the same thing if you want. For example, Lapis Amulets are very nice, but I don't have a transmutation, so we're not going to buy that. So we're going to put this right over here for the Marauder. And we're just going to vendor these gems, or these uh, things right here. We don't need those. Okay, and I'm just going to grab the Flame Wall and the Frost Blink. You really want to use Flame Wall by this point. It adds so much damage. Die. Okay, so we just went back over here to uh, the coast. And we're going to just be swinging over to the right over here into Tidal Island. Okay, so now that you have Flame Wall... The purpose of what you're doing is you're basically going to be shooting the rolling magma into the flame wall, which gets massive bonus damage. You don't even have to worry about the aiming too much. If you notice, I don't even really try to aim it. 
If you see this pack of mobs while leveling, you see the little fire shield. I typically skip those until we have a little bit more gear, only because the fire and ignite resistant, you can see, they take quite a few hits to kill. Still, again, if you don't really care about speed, you can just kill them. I'm only killing them here because otherwise they're going to bully me at Hailrake, who is right over here. Alright, once we kill this guy, we're done. We are done with this character. Remember to pick up all of the blue items here. So, I'm going to log off. If you want to do this on League Start, make sure you hit character selection. If you log fully out and there's a queue, you'll get put into the queue. Take the Quicksilver. I believe uh, in the POB we take uh, Phantasm and Prolif. At this point in time, you can open up the POB and click the section I was telling you about. So if I take a little minute here to show you, click here to see the gems you need for the Witch. You can grab all of these. Now, I'm not going to be grabbing Flame Totem and Phantasm because I'm going to just leave that alone and just simply go with Rolling Magma. If you want to do this instead, you can see all the gem links right here. Okay, so I'm going to move out of that. And let me go ahead and vendor that. Now... This pair of blue boots, you could actually identify if you want because they can get movement speed. I'm going to just ignore it because we got int early and I really like intelligence. So now I'm going to just throw this gear in over here, give him a Quicksilver Flask. And this is one of the nice advantages now for starting this character. You get an extra Quicksilver for your next character. So this is pretty much it. Let's go. Create the official... Do you think you are RF, to face YouTube, the Chief, let's go. It's time. <coughs> if you happen to level up on Hailrake, every time you level up, the shops will get a few new items in their, in their stock. So you can always use that search string that we had and put that into the shop. It doesn't hurt you. Later on, um, there's another search string we can use. I don't have it right now. I'll ask chat to make it to highlight four links. But four links, I don't think we can get until the end of Act 3 or the beginning of Act 4. Okay. The lock always swings with his left hand, if I remember. His left... Yeah. Is it his left? Yeah. So if you, if you kite him... Counterclockwise, you pretty much never get hit. It's an easy way to do it on melee characters. You just swing around like this, and he literally never hits you. Okay. I live to see another door. One exception, this shield is worth identifying because it can hit plus the level of fire gems. It didn't, so that's fine. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just vendor everything here. Okay. And let's go over to our tab here. Now, if you want to go a little faster, don't wear a body armor. Body armors actually reduce your movement speed. Not a big deal, just a little thing to take note of. We want to make sure we pull all of those gems out that we had before. Okay, we don't need this, and we're going to just dual the wand. So right now, our links are currently Rolling Magma and Arcane Surge. Once we hit four, we're replacing Surge with Ignite Prolif. We can now also officially level... <clears throat> we can officially level our Rolling Magma. One other thing I did not check for, I don't have the search string for this, but... If you find triple blue, triple blue is very good, and blue, blue, red is also very good. This will highlight on the filter as well. That's for the Holy Flame Totem setup. Okay, we're going to go. I am surrounded by living corpses and dying Oriathans. What I can recommend for Marauder is getting level 2, so you can get life and armor, sorry, level 3 before Mudflats. It makes a very big difference. So just kill a few mobs. You can use Rolling Magma and Flame Totem. If you want to go faster, that's the way to do it. If you want a more relaxed playstyle, pick one or the other. Level 4 is when we get our, like, big damage spike because we get Proliferation and we get Flame Wall, which is kind of like the bread and butter here.
You never really want to stand still in Path of Exile. You always want to be kiting. If you want to go a little faster, you want to learn to kite towards the end of the zone. I'm going to grab this iron hat. Swap that. Don't really have to worry too much about picking up white items. It's mainly about the blue items here. All right. They didn't hit level three, but that's okay. We'll just kill a pack of Roas here. Now, Arcane Surge is kind of a tricky one. You can level it up a few times. I typically just keep it level one because we're going to just put it on Frostbank later. doesn't really matter too much. The thing about Arcane Surge is the more you level it, the more MP you have to spend before it works. Okay, so here's our level up, and let me explain here why I like this level up. This number is not necessarily accurate, but it's pretty fair at our current level. So with just our armor gear, we already have very big physical damage reduction. By putting this node, we get another 30 base armor. So to show how this works, I'll let these Roas charge me. This bonus armor you got makes you incredibly tanky by the time you hit Mudflats. Now granted, if the monsters have added Elemental, it's going to do a lot more damage. But just starting off, this is very solid. Three, four? No, or three. Okay. Busted hatchet. There's a blue. There's that fire and ignite resist pack. We're just going to skip those. Do we get all three already? We have all three. And we're level four. Maybe we don't skip them now. Okay. So I'm going to put the ignite prolif instead of the arcane surge. So we're going to take that out for now. I'm going to grab frost blink because that's my favorite mobility skill. I like that on E. Don't have to worry too much about that. Actually, that's 32 armor. That's more armor than our current one. Why not? And then Flame Wall. I'm just going to put that where I like it. Let's go. And see now, just from the Flame Wall, the damage has went up so much. I guess, actually, I did also get a level of Rolling Magma. But... And then that Quicksilver as well. Okay. From here... If you cannot use Flame Wall, I would wait before you go back for Hail Rake. If you have access to Flame Wall, Hail Rake is no problem. Hail Rake is the guy we killed on the Witch before we started this character. You don't need any of those red gems I skipped over. There is one called Steel Skin, and you can choose to use Steel Skin if you want, but it doesn't make too much of a difference. We're just going to check to see if she's got any Int Gear, and she does not. You could also grab some Coral Rings for some extra life. I'm going to leave them alone for now. I'm, I'm pretty... I feel pretty confident. Thanks everyone for all the support. I'll read out all the subs at the end of the uh, recording. Now one thing to note is because this doesn't do a crazy amount of damage right away, when we are doing the boss Brutus, who is going to be later, it's not a bad idea to consider getting two mono flasks instead of just one. Uh, currently I'm running two. I usually usually run two life, two uh, MP, and one Quicksilver. However, um, because we are muling, we get access to a second Quicksilver. So now that we're going to kill Hailerick again, we get a second. So that typically pivots me into two life, two Quicksilvers, and one MP flask. You can always just use a portal scroll to get more MP back as well. There's no harm in it. So there's the second iron ring that I really wanted. So I'm going to yoink that. There's a Pua Amulet for a little bit of regen. Now, there's nothing wrong with picking up these white items since we're going to go back to town anyway. I'd recommend not using your Portal Scrolls and saving them because you're going to want them for later. Here, you can grab Momentum. It's not a super big deal, but we're going to want either Momentum or Faster Attacks later. I'm actually not sure which one feels better yet, but that's for a little bit later for Shield Charge. So I'm going to sell that and let's go ahead and move on. Remember, every time you level up, you can check the vendors. It's very, very helpful if you have not found any intelligence gear yet. But have no fear. If you're unlucky and haven't found any intelligence whatsoever, when we get higher level, we get versatility, and then we're guaranteed intelligence. Also, Pua amulets should be showing up very soon. Sorry, not Pua. Um, Lapis. 
Over here, you can either go regen or life and armor. Both of them don't really matter too much, so I typically go regeneration, just because Chieftain has a little bit less sustain, actually a lot less sustain than the other ascendancies, but it's still usually enough. I cannot do this yet. All right, so there's two things here. We're looking for a dweller, but we're also looking for kind of like stairs or a bridge. If you find the stairs or a bridge, that's the one I prefer to do first, um, which we'll talk about in a minute here. So this is a fire and ignite resist pack. We're just going to... Actually, I'm not going to kill it. You can see they're pretty tanky right now. I'm just going to skip those. You can kill them if you want. It's not bad for currency or gear. And this here is what we're looking for. When you see this, if you have a portal, drop a portal scroll here and move on. If you don't have a portal, you can choose to just explore the opposite side and you will go to a zone called... Uh... Actually, I don't remember what the zone is called, but there's a little boss in there called Dweller. That's who we'll be uh, fighting after. The reason we dropped the portal there is we're just going to save a little bit of time by blinking back later. Flooded depths. There we go. Thank you. <clears throat> There's a nice blue pack. It's only three, but... You can see I'm not really aiming the rolling magma at all. I'm quite literally just dropping a flame wall and shooting it. And it does like all the heavy lifting by itself. Flame wall, shoot. Same thing here. Flame wall, shoot. There's a blue pack, so we'll stay on them for a little bit. Okay. Now there is something that I want to bring up that I actually forgot to talk about. And this makes the leveling a lot smoother as well. And we're going to do that right here at this teleport, or this waypoint. Just get rid of this guy. Okay. So, go back to town. At this point, you want to sell all of your blue items. It could identify scepters. It could get, like, something fire-related. Um, cold Dispels is okay, but I'm going to vendor it for this one specific reason. If you see Goat Horns... Goat horns are incredibly strong because they provide flat fire damage to spells. So I'm going to snag two goat horns and I'm looking for the highest implicit of damage. So this is two to four. I'm going to grab this for one wisdom. Um, then we have a one to four, a one to three, and a one to three. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this other one to four here. And we're going to keep these until we get a little bit more int. So speaking of int, maybe we get lucky and there's some int gear. There is actually one, but I don't have an armor scrap. We're also going to look for three blue. So I'm just going to kind of peek the shop here and see if there's any three blue. There is three blue link, but unfortunately, I don't have a armor scrap. If you have a whetstone, you can actually convert at Bestel here. Is it Bestel? Maybe the one of the other guys? I forgot. Um, Any int? No int. Okay. So we're just going to worry about that after. Now we're going to go take this portal back, and we're going to go fight Dweller. I just got my level up. Interestingly enough, if you want, you can go back and check. Since I only have one portal scroll, I'm not going to waste it on going back and checking. It would just make it a little bit easier, specifically for this fight, if we had more damage, but it's okay. There's a nice juicy blue pack. We want to fight that. The shrine can help us kill Dweller as well. So if you find a shrine, you can click it and go rush Dweller. For the sake of the video, we're going to turn it off. That'd be cheating. Okay. Now, regardless if we find extra int gear or not... In two levels, and in fact, actually one, because Dweller gives us a skill point, we get a bonus 20 intelligence. Yeah, here is your Dweller of the Deep. I'm going to pick up this extra MP flask, because we might want it for Brutus and potentially Mervale. So you can see here, I'm pretty much shooting the rolling magma into the flame wall, cross-blinking to the other side, and then repeating. 
Okay, let's grab these. Log out. Log back in. Now, I like to keep the boots in case they have movement speed, but I desperately need the intelligence on my current boots. So therefore, I'm not identifying them and I'm just going to wait. Uh, these are our goat horns. We don't want to vendor those. I think this body armor could actually get intelligence on it. No, it didn't. Okay. Let's do that. And maybe she has intelligence. Nope. Let's go check the other one over here. Oh, wow. That's actually incredibly strong. That's a nice one. Nope, Farewell. nothing. Have no fear. Very soon, we get extra int. Okay, let's continue on. So, when you spawn here, there's two ways you can do this. Number one, if you have the map already explored, you know that you are supposed to go this way. Number two, there are these little rocks here. You see these little rocks? These rocks indicate which way to go to continue. To confirm this, I will create a new instance and you'll see some rocks. Do the rocks? That's the way we want to go. That's the way to the next zone. Here, I pretty much just like to run ahead, shoot a rolling magma and move on. If the loot filter makes a noise, you can turn around and see what dropped. If there's a blue pack, I will fight it. But for the most part, I'm just kind of skipping everything. I'm also going to skip Kaduku here. I don't really mind. If you noticed, we just hit level 8. You know what that means? It's time for some damage. Now... The one unfortunate occurrence that I did not take into account here is that um, our weapons that I want to use have very bad links on them. So there's two things to do here. A, because I'm running an armor energy shield body armor, there's a chance I can use a chrome and get two blues. Number two, we can go back to town because the zone we're in right now will have a waypoint over here and we can again check for intelligence gear and just look for some early links. The loot filter will also highlight any early three links that are good for the build, so stay tuned for hearing that noise. There's another coral ring. Grab that, replace it with the iron. And for now, because we're not using this at all, we're just going to go ahead and slap on this other goat horn. That's two to four. There's another coral ring. Corals roll uh, up to 30 base life, so you can always check if you want to see if that one's better. Okay, somehow I missed the waypoint, so we're just going to go to the next zone. There's a, there's a waypoint somewhere here early on. There's also a waypoint in this next zone, so we're just going to go to the next zone. There's a nice pack of blue mobs. We're going to fight them as well. A quicksilver. Okay, okay. We don't need a third one. Okay, right here for sure, we can go back. Can't miss this waypoint. A slave is not a man. A slave is not even worthy of death. Okay, step one, let's clean out our inventory. I'm not going to use this flask, so I'm just going to send it away. Um, here, I'd recommend faster attacks or life tap. Doesn't really matter too much. The one nice thing about grabbing the faster attacks now is that the shops will scale with your level, so the gems will actually be higher level. Also, we picked up a blue, blue link body armor right here. So I'm just going to identify this body armor and we're going to just switch it with what we're using and go like this with our links and then put on the goat horn. And that works out well. We'll just do another check here. We can see if there's any two to four fire damage goat horns. There's a two to three. Okay. Okay. Nothing too special over there. Let's go ahead and peek here. All right. Now note that this also highlights 10% movement speed boots. Since I don't need the intelligence on my boots, 
right now, I'm going to identify these and hope for 10% movement speed. There's one right there. There's also one right there. So now we can swap that. Put that over there. And we're going to hold these boots in case we need the intelligence later. Okay. Now we pretty much continue on. So what we're looking for now is a three link blue, blue, blue. Go to check the shop again. I keep forgetting about it. Blue, blue, blue will give you the much needed last support gem that we're going to use, which is called combustion. It gives big ignite chance, which makes this even smoother. And also uh, gives you more fire damage, which just straight up makes it stronger. I also just got two large life flasks, so I'm going to be replacing two little baby flasks there. Also, here is a Labyrinth Trial. I won't be doing all of these in the run just because it's kind of like inflates the time, but I can just kind of run you through to show you how this works. There's a bunch of spikes. You can hide out in the little sides here. Um, it's going to happen once you hit the lever. Vice versa, you just face tank him and use a HP potion. It doesn't really matter that much. The only thing you really have to worry is right at the end here, there's always, I think, a rare monster. For some reason, there's always like an archer for me who shocks me in the face. Shocking is, uh, is, oh, oh. Okay, sometimes there's a, I don't know if that's a bug. There's the rare archer, though, where you can get imp you can get hit by the stuff, but you can still move and the bleed does crazy damage. Normally, I would fight this guy, but he is extra life and fire ignite resistant, so see you later, friend. See you later. Here's a blue pack. We want to fight them. Short bow. Going. Okay. What I like to do also is take my skills and put always attack without moving. This will make it so if you click the skill out of range, it will cast it anyway and just put it as far as it can go. This prevents your character from running up and then casting the skill. It gives you more control. actually gonna fight this guy just to see maybe he drops a three link see if we get lucky oh. every death brings me i forgot is it mervale where we get our where we get our uh combustion or is it before brutus or is it after brutus i think it's a level eight so i'm not sure oh there's an armor scrap it was actually good stuff to buy with an armor scrap at the shop when we last looked I wonder if that uh, three-link helmet is still there, actually. I think that got... Probably not. It's probably gone. Cool rings are not bad. They're base uh, mana, so it can help you out if you're struggling a little. There's that fire and ignite resist pack. They're actually pretty squishy right now. Oh, actually, these are extra fire damage. Never mind. A little different. Your brawn is about to meet its match, brute. Give the warden my. Okay. This is where we have, like, our first little mini boss guy. This guy hits pretty hard. Um, you don't really want to face tank him. I mean, you can kind of face tank him a little bit, but you're going to be using a scroll or a portal scroll potentially. So I just like to kind of... Same thing with Dweller. I kind of just bounce back and forth with my flame wall uh, and my frost blink. You just always want to make sure you're hitting into the flame wall. Whenever he does the slam, I recommend you frost blink around. Frost blinking through him is a good idea because it creates the chilled ground and keeps him chilled. When he's chilled, he's going to hit less frequently. So here you can see uh, I'm struggling with MP. So this is where if I had a second flask instead of two quicksilvers, it would be fine. 
Alternatively, if you have a portal scroll, you can just hit the portal scroll, go back to town, do this to be extra safe, and then we're good to go. There's a blue goat horn. That's really good. We want those. And anything else we can hold, we're going to pick up two vendor. Good enough. Okay. We're going to go ahead and go back and check some shops. So if you're using scepters at this point, you're going to have access to shield charge. Mm -hmm. Since we're just using dual wield wands for more damage, we're going to just focus on what we're doing now. I'm going to ID this because maybe it gets int. Uh, 20 life is actually not bad. Let's just do that. We have white gloves, so I'm going to ID these. These have life and attack speed. I'll, I'll take it. We don't actually need this green yet, so just take that green and put it over there. Uh, what is this? Frost blink. I do like frost blink, though. Okay. And let's hope the goat horn hits, like, flat fire or cast speed. I rolled Int with fire damage. That's actually pretty cool. Okay, okay, I'll take it. So let's just vendor this other goat horn. We don't need it. We live, we are okay, um, Vitality is a good aura to pick here. You can also grab Clarity if you want. Clarity gives mana regeneration. And that's it for here. Nothing else. We can look for blue, blue, blue really fast. I think if you do like this, you can do a third one like that. And that's blue, 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 I believe. I'll just do blue, blue to check. Um, there's a blue, 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 but it's a claw. There's actually this silken vest, which, you know what? I kind of want that. It's only a transmute. I'm going to do it. So we're going to yoink. There goes one of our transmutes. That's the advantage of selling a whole bunch of blue items early is you can guarantee an orb of transmutation. Now we do want to get the last support gem, which is combustion, but I don't think we get it. Yet. Actually, we have it right now. So there is our last blue. Now we're going to use for combustion. And that is going to be our three link once we can equip this. So turn on Vitality. Let's go. Looking for that juicy level 11. There we go. Okay, big things happen here. Take this off, put this back on. So we're going to do Rolling Magma, Combustion, alongside with Ellie Prolif. And now watch when we shoot. It's just everything is going to just melt. Except for the fire and ignite resist extra life mob. That's we're getting a lot of those this run. That's a little unfair, GGG. I guess we can blame the new face of GGG while we're at it, right? Hi, I'm Mark Roberts, game director on Path of Exile. Okay. Now with our passives, you might think like this is kind of weird with our passive allocation. We are aiming more towards getting our First damage cluster on the tree. Little far away for us, but we'll make it. Now, this is highlighting because of Holy Flame Totem. Because we already have our three link blue chest piece, we're going to ignore that. We're refusing. We're going to want those later. I cannot do this yet. And see, one rolling magma took out all of those monsters. So take a look again. Flame wall, rolling magma. Flame wall, rolling magma. Literally not even aiming it, right? Here, look, I'll close my eyes. Did I kill the mobs? Looks good to me. Okay, here you want to see if you have an extra portal scroll. We don't have an extra portal scroll, so normally what I would do here is if I find... Um, this extra little zone we'll, we'll go into. It's the ship's graveyard. Oh, this is ship graveyard. Um, then I would drop a portal there, but I don't have one, so it's okay. Juicy blue pack. Thank you very much. Okay, so there's fair graves. One more scrap.
Where they at? Where are they at? Okay. All we're going to do here is walk inside here, grab the waypoint, then go back around and go back to the ship graveyard. Now we're just looking for a little zone here. We want the little zone here because it uh, has an item in it called the All Flame, which gives us an extra skill point. Oh, it is Ship Graveyard. It's just the cave. Okay. So essences here are really good, especially Woe. Woe essence is spell damage. Spell damage influences our rolling magma. Doesn't scale the ignite, but that doesn't really matter. It's basically just going to add more properties and give us more damage, and that's really all that matters. So get rid of this guy, grab that, and I am going to just take off this current goat horn right here. And I'm just going to use this essence on it, and we got 24% spell damage with fire damage. Put that back on, and we're good to go. Now, if you find any sapphire rings while you're at it, sapphire rings help a lot with the next boss that's coming up, uh, Mervale. Doesn't matter too much if you avoid mechanics, but if you want a bit of extra assistance, definitely pick up some sapphire rings. Oh, Carved Wand. But Carved Wand, unfortunately, doesn't have a, a better implicit. If you need a three link, it's okay to use one for sure. I just try to uh, get the three links on other pieces of gear so I can constantly upgrade my weapons since that's majority of the damage. Okay, pop up here. And we got Fair Graves. So basically, you take the All Flame and you give it to him and then you have this little tiny wave defense that's a complete joke, to be honest, so... Especially with the rolling magma, magma proliferation, you literally don't have to do anything. You can see the see the little circles on the floor here. These circles are pretty much what do all the damage. Not all the damage, but all of the clear for you. Okay, grab, and we're good. Okay, let's vendor some stuff here. So we don't need any of these red gems. I would just leave them. If you want to grab something, you can. We're going to ID these because they could have movement speed plus something else. They do not. I'm going to ID the helmet too. Uh, I don't care too much for it. And then we'll just vendor those. Very good. I don't want this MP flask and I don't care about the Pua. Now, if you have a blue blue open like we have here, you can do Frost Blink and Arcane Surge. And what that does is it triggers, uh, is it cast speed? No, they, they keep changing this gem. That triggers cast speed and mana regeneration rate. I'm also going to right click that arcane surge so it doesn't level up anymore. And now it's down here. If you want to look at it, you could probably put maybe one or two points into it before the MP cost is too high. The purpose of having it low level is every time I use frost blink, it refreshes the arcane surge buff. Grab these. I cannot do this yet. And all the transmutations that we can. Now we gotta be a little careful because we're going into Mervale with no portal scrolls. I have no portal scrolls and only one MP flask. So this is where I like to have two just in case because I've gotten really unlucky without finding portals. I do believe you can buy portal scrolls at a rate of I think it's four wisdoms per one portal. So that's honestly something I would have done in hindsight if I saw that I didn't have any portals. Always nice to have at least one portal for these boss fights. Is it three to one? Maybe it's three to one, actually. I think you're right. 
Okay, careful of the red squids. They explode on contact, so I try... If I'm getting surrounded by them, I immediately want to frost blink away to prevent myself from just instantly getting stunlocked and dying. I would pick up the blues, but we're running a bit out of inventory space, so... I feel like I'm going the wrong way. Okay, it must be over here. There are, like, these little spirits, and I think you're supposed to follow them, and they take you to Mervale, but... I feel like they always kind of bait me and just take me to the wrong location. These right here, see them right there? There's again, and again. Okay, it's over here. So since we know we're going up to the boss fight, I'm just gonna make sure my flasks are full. Oh, just kidding. Wrong side again, I got baited. So, it's this way. Okay, not full MP, so I am gonna have to use a precious MP flask here, but I think our damage is good enough, so let's take a look. So I just kind of bob and weave here with these attacks. It's very easy to dodge. And then I just move out of the ice storm. She will spawn adds, and when she spawns adds, this is a great time to get our flash charges back. Here you can see the damage really isn't that bad. So you can see we're out of MP flasks, but she's about to go into her next phase. We get our flash charges back. We're gonna kill some of these adds and we'll get some flash charges back again. This, uh, this phase, she spawns way more, so I do believe we get more charges. Okay, she's not spawning any. That's weird. There are the squids. Okay, here we go. Yep, there's the flash charges I wanted. And again. Oh, oh. Get away from those squids. All right. So, anything blue, I replace with rare, because I think it just sells for more. So, let's do this. Grab the vine circlet. And then, uh, we don't really need this, so we'll just trade that for the mallet. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and go back to Act 1 and vendor this stuff. Still really want these transmutations, so I am going to be just vendoring all of them like this. Only exception here, this vine circlet could be much better than my current one. So I'm going to go ahead and identify this. 17 life with lightning resistance. I would say that that's better. So let's vendor that. Swap what I have and vendor you. Goodbye. Oh, I forgot. That's our Fairgrave skill point. Kind of forgot about that one. Yeah, don't forget about your Fairgrave skill point. All right. If you are eager uh, to know, we are actually pretty close to running Righteous Fire. In terms of the skill tree, we are... One, two, three points away. Uh, however, we are going to need a lot of transmutations. Ideally, like, maybe five transmutations. So, make sure you do your best on selling all of the blue loot and rare loot. The transmutations are going to allow us to craft fire resistance on our gear. This fire resistance is very important for sustaining. I heard a currency drop. I want it. Look, a transmutation. You can smell it. I'm even gonna kill this guy. He's see you later. Port scepter. Port scepters are actually pretty solid. I will not identify this one because well, okay, sure, I will identify it. Port scepters are better for righteous fire, but goat horns are much better for single target. The reason I say this is because these give flat fire damage, which does not work for righteous fire. However, percentage elemental damage does. Flat damage is much better in the early stages of the game. So I recommend you stick with the flat damage versus um, versus going for the elemental damage right now. Because you won't really struggle with clear. You're only going to struggle with single target. So again, you could go back and look for 
um, the vendors there. You could look for your three link blue. You could look for your movement speed boots. You just use that search string. Now, if you notice the flask I rolled here, this flask actually says that it removes all burning on use. If you are playing Righteous Fire and you have a flask that removes your burning and you press it, it will in fact turn off your Righteous Fire. This doesn't really matter too much, but a lot of people get confused sometimes on why the skill just stops working. It's because of this modifier right here. Our first damage node on the tree. So the reason I decided to go right here is because Chamber of Sins, which is located here, is actually where you get Righteous Fire. Gotta need the skill gem to be able to play the build, right? Around this time is when I start to look out for shields, because when I get Righteous Fire, I'm more interested in shield charging. To shield charge, I really recommend a 3-link, although it can work on a 2-link. Shield charge, which is red, and life tap, which is red, um, is a good combination, but it's too slow for me, so I typically like to go shield charge faster attacks or shield charge momentum. The Eternal Empire and then life tap as the third link. Now, when you're in Chamber of Sins see the waypoint the waypoint is facing this side here which means that is actually the way we need to go every other location will instead have a blue pack of monsters instead of the way down so if i go here there will be a blue pack instead of the proper way down of course it's a giant pack of fire and ignite resist zombies but that's beside the point now this is actually worth picking up just to identify because it could have in it could basically just have um more than one to four fire dispels which would potentially make it better if it beats it so i'll just id and we don't want that that's chaos damage so now by following this this way we will get to the end of chamber of sins here i cannot do this yet and you can see here is the end right here in Chamber of Sins 2, there is a lab trial. You can see right here. So you wanna make sure you get the lab trial. If you're not getting the lab trial right now, just make sure you grab the waypoint in Chamber of Sins 1 so you can come back here later. And there's a ruby ring. We wanna pick that up. We're gonna save it. That's a good roll, 27%. Okay, here is the lab trial. Just go do it to show you guys since I found it. If you somehow have managed to get to Act 2 and have not leveled your Righteous Fire or your uh, Rolling Magma, reminder, make sure you are constantly leveling your Rolling Magma. This does happen to a few people. I think that doesn't really matter, so we just skip it, go across. Oops, okay, I, yeah, okay, uh, don't lock yourself in like this. I don't know why that's a thing. Okay, that's completed. Just gonna kill this guy and then move on. Ooh, identify. Yup. Yeah. Huh? Okay, chaos and then cold damage over time. Okay, I, I thought I, I was a little confused there for a second. Now, if you're opening these boxes, be warned, they can freeze you. So be a little careful there. Oh, that is a lot of loot. Okay. Oh my. Okay. Quartz Scepter, Leather, Sapphire. I'm taking all the accessories to Vendor for later. Greater Life Flask. I feel like this is all a dead end here. Is it? No, maybe not. This is a strange layout. I don't think I've seen this before. This is like the biggest chamber of sins I've ever seen. Okay, it's here. Holy. Okay. Let me go ahead and grab this mastery for regenerate one life per uncapped fire res. 
what that means is you get one flat regen per one flat fire. If you have a hundred fire res, you have a hundred life regen. This node is mandatory for running this build in the early stages. There is no workaround. Make sure you allocate it. Okay. Put that strange device. And it's time. Now we just have to make sure we have enough transmutations. Okay. I like to take Herald of Thunder here. So let's go ahead and identify the scepter. 10 to 21 fire damage to spells. We got our new weapon along with Int and Cast Speed. I'm just going to put that there, but that's our new weapon for sure. We have a red, red, red shield. I'm going to identify it. I'm going to put this shield here because I want a shield charge in the future. Um, we have a pair of triple green boots. If these hit movement speed, we're going to use them. They did not, so we're going to vendor those. I'm going to just vendor these rings the way they are. Same with this. I'm going to identify the belt here. Uh, doesn't really matter. I'll just put that there for now. So let's get rid of some of this stuff. We don't need any of these. We don't want those. We want the transmutation shards. Yeah, let's get rid of that. Beautiful. We now have four transmutations. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. Remember those red gems that we never picked up from the quest? You can go ahead and grab them now, or you can just grab the starting ones. You can then go ahead and take these red gems along with the iron rings and vendor them. This guarantees you ruby rings. So if you got unlucky and didn't find any, this recipe guarantees that you get them. The more iron rings you pick up, the, the more rolls you get on the base type. Obviously, you want to go with the one that has higher fire res. So I'm going to grab the 25 and the 27. Now I'm going to go to my hideout. If you are using Awakened PoE Trade, you can use F5 to go to your hideout. And from here, we are going to craft fire res on everything we can. So this pair of gloves has an open suffix. What are we going to do? We're going to put fire res. Um, this body armor has an open suffix. We're putting fire res. This helmet does not have an open suffix. Um, these boots do not. This amulet. I mean, realistically, I'd prefer a Pua amulet. This ring, though, fire res. This ring over here, fire res. Let's take a look at our resistance. Our resistance is 126. This is enough already to run RF. So <clears throat> what we're going to go ahead and do now is we're going to turn it on. So I'm going to come over here. Hello. Actually, it's Hello. Silk, you I think. You are well. Actually, no, it's her. So we have an alteration. We're going to buy Righteous Fire with this alteration. Be well. We're then going to go ahead and put it inside our weapon. And I'm going to activate it to show you that we are sustaining. There you go. Life is not degening. In fact, even if I turn off vitality, we do not degen. However, we want to go back and look because I want to go shield charge now. So I'm going to go ahead and see what is available in the vendors for me. We also really want a lapis amulet. Unfortunately, I have no chance orb, so we cannot buy that. Let's see what we have here. So, mainly we're just looking at shields more than anything. And unfortunately, well, I mean, we don't really have to look at shields. There's a bunch of different things you can look at. We just pretty much want red-green as our primary link. So, that's the main thing. Hey, Palseron, thanks so much for the raid. It's minimal chat activity right now. We're doing the recording for YouTube. So, this actually is pretty cool. It's fire res with movement speed for one armor scrap. I'm actually going to go ahead and snag that. That's a really nice deal. So we're going to do that. Put Vitality up there. Farewell. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just vendor that. So what we're going to do now instead is, do you remember that shield we had? We're going to grab that shield and we should have a Chromatic Orb. We're going to Chrome it and hope we hit one green. We did not hit a green. So we're going to hold off on the shield charging for right now. Instead, we are going to put on this weapon. Okay, so I actually can't. I can't put on the weapon, and this is a very unfortunate occurrence. Since I have somehow not found a Lapis Amulet, we don't have enough intelligence. And you could craft intelligence, but um, at the moment, I don't have any more transmutations. So we're going to just wait until we get another transmutation, and that's okay. So we'll put this over here, and put this one right over here. Okay. 
We can check if we can buy a transmutation. I'm not sure what the cost is on the transmutation orb. Um, we'll just wait. It's fine. There's no rush. Could sell an alt. Is it alt, alt for transmutation? Yes. Where do you actually see it? I don't see it here. Is it an act one only? Be kind if you, can. you literally sell an alt? Or are you memeing me? The I feel like I'm being memed. More wisdoms. Am I drunk? Be well. It's act one. Why does it why is it not an act two? That's interesting. Mm -hmm. It's seven portal scrolls. Holy! Alright, let's do it. Take care. Let's do it. Not a problem. Okay. You are so now I'm gonna go ahead and buy the 27 int lapis. Replace our current one. Go. Now, we're going to go ahead and put on the Quartz Scepter. So we have Righteous Fire and Flame Wall. I'm going to put Flame or Righteous Fire here. And unfortunately, do I have a spot for Flame Wall? I don't. So for now, I'm just going to drop the Arcane Surge. And let's vendor these right here. Then we get an alteration back. Yeah. Okay. You don't have to do this. You can absolutely just stick with the double wands. I just want to get Shield Charge going. The shield had a blue. The shield actually did have a blue. You're right. You're right. Let's just do that and then put flame wall back. That's a good idea. There we go. I'm not used to... I don't know why I'm always used to just putting shield charge in my shield. I guess it kind of makes sense, right? So actually, in fact, we don't want to use Arcane Surge because I would rather use Herald of Thunder. Now, Herald of Thunder will work really well with this proliferation we have because what it's going to do is it's going to shock enemies, making them take more damage from the Ignite. We also want to turn on our Righteous Fire right here. Now, our Righteous Fire, unfortunately, will not have any support gems until we get to Library, which is a little bit later. And since we currently are not using Shield Charge, may as well identify this Scepter. We got Spell Damage. We'll take it. Uh, we want to actually hold that Shield, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get rid of that. Even unlinked, Righteous Fire still does pretty okay damage. Oh, we're going the wrong way. I'm gonna follow the road over here. I cannot do this yet. That's a chromatic orb. That's totally worth picking up. So let's yoink that. Eroded tower? Is that the same as this? Grab the waypoint. See you later, bud. Your death. I'll just leave that one on the floor. Life. Okay, back in town. The end of learning. The day. Yes. Let me get rid of some of this stuff here. Inventory is getting super full. Okay, I'm actually gonna go ahead and just dump my currency right over here. Don't need that anymore. What do you want? We're just gonna go ahead and take a peek here and see if there are any red dash green. Oops, Daisy. Nothing there. So I'm going to just use this chrome and see if we get lucky and hit red or green. We did not. That's okay. All right. Now we pretty much finished everything on that side. If you want to get your um, trial for Labyrinth in the future, you can go run over here. Um, otherwise, you can just do it after. Sorry, I got distracted by the dog. Forgot Righteous Fire. I mean, everything's dying so fast. It's hard to remember.
Okay. From here, I like to grab this little node here for extra damage. Oh, we are frozen. Gotta be careful with those boxes. Having a remove freeze flask can help a lot. Okay, this crumbled road here, we want to follow it so we can fight the next bandit Alira. And there's a quartz wand, but we're just pretty much going to vendor those. If you're still on wands, quartz wand's okay. Um, I like the other wands better because they're fire damage. If I had to pick a, like a preference, it's basically like fire and lightning over cold. Lightning provides you with shock which is more damage from everything fire provides you with more raw damage and uh the ignite there's no blacker magic than death which Remember to be on the lookout for still picking up like pretty much all the items to sell. The primary reason is because you still want to um, you still want to craft fire res on your gear as you go forward. Now that little thing that we just clicked there, we are gonna want for later. Um, what I mean by wanting it for later is it's going to give us a skill point when we go back to Act One again. All right. So since Alira was on the right side, uh, you can tell it's on the right side for us because the, the crumbled road goes to the right. That means Weaver, which is the next boss, is on the left. Holy loot drops. I don't know what's going on here. I'm actually going to... What is happening? All right, let's let's um, let's see. Let's take this. Oh, no, okay, never mind. We don't need that at all. Let's see. What do we want here? I don't really care about the ring. Let's just take the spirit shield more than anything and... The ring. I like accessories because they're tiny and they fit in your inventory really easily. Okay, let's identify that shield and see what we got. Uh, I don't really care for that. It's mainly minion oriented. That shield was green red linked. Oh, I missed it then. It's okay. I cannot do this yet. We'll find more. I'm not used to looking at red greens because I'm primarily caster, so I usually just buy them out of the I buy them out of the store. you got nothing good my mana is gone okay some of these and I don't want this so I'm gonna grab this all right I'm gonna log off here make sure you grab the uh, little spike here because you're gonna need this 
Um, these support gems, none of them really help us, so I'm going to just pass on them. And there's unfortunately not really much we can get here. You can grab an extra Righteous Fire to level, but it's not super important. So let's go ahead and clean up our inventory. Um, ones we have. Yeah. Be kind if you can. What? And look for red green link again. Return. Must. Check act one really fast. Still alive. Oh, kind of unlucky, but that's okay. Stay sharp. All right, I'm gonna go let the dog in. Uh, I'll be right back. Skip forward two minutes if you guys want to see the content. Be right back. Okay, let's go ahead and get back to it. Now let's make sure we grabbed our skill point from Act 1. I don't remember if I did. Do you want to talk to Bestel here? Perfect. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and go into Barbarism here. Barbarism is going to help us with Sustain because it's giving us extra Fire Res and Max Fire Res. Holy Velvet Gloves. This is a rare mod called Keepers of the Trove. It makes it so all monsters drop like the same thing. I'm going to leave those alone. Now there's a really nice note to take on Life Nodes or Life Mastery. The life mastery that I'm referring to here is basically 50 bonus life. I don't like taking this early, and the primary reason I don't like taking it early is because if you take it too early, since our our sustain is coming from flat life regen, the more life we have, the stronger the degen of righteous fire. Granted, the more damage it deals, but the harder it is to sustain. A little bit later into the game, we will absolutely take that. Oh, another blue pack. Ooh, iron scale boots. That's another chromatic. Just gonna grab that and go back here. Okay. Hello. Surely. Surely, with these chromatics, we get what we want, right? Let's take a look, see. Honestly, at this point, I should just get a different shield, but. Okay, I got what I wanted. I'm gonna take this off. We're gonna put that over there. We're gonna grab, let's see, faster attacks. Go back to act one, life tap and shield charge. If you grab that life tap from earlier, you wanna go ahead and put that in your uh, your stuff now. So let's take a look here. Life tap and shield charge. All right. Now, unfortunately, I'm missing a blue for flame wall. So what I'm gonna do is take off this helmet and jeweler orbit. The reason why is it's 
This is a ES piece, although it doesn't say it requires it, it doesn't say it requires int, but these typically roll blue. I don't think it matters when it's this low item level, but usually that's how it works. So we're gonna just vendor that, put on our vitality, and go back to where we were. You also want to make sure when you kill the three bandits, you talk to Aramir here. He gives you a skill point, and you can take the apex, which you are going to need later. Now, the reason I like Shield Charge Frost Blink, but understand that movement skills are your, like a preference. So you can pick any combination of movement skills you really like. Shield Charge synergizes really well with RF because you have a little bubble around you. And Frost Blink is an instant cast skill. So that means you could quite literally go like this and interrupt your Shield Charge with a Swift Frost Blink. This makes it very nice for people who want full control over their character. If you accidentally shield charge into a scary pack, you can reposition with Frost Blink, right? Maybe you're charging into a mob that's about to whack you in the face. You can Frost Blink behind him, etc. Now, with these three points, we're about to take some of the best sustain on the entire tree. So if you actually pay attention to the regen, I have just about 200 life regen per second here. Uh, actually, never mind. I need one more point. So you grab these two nodes. So that didn't actually go up a lot. It's mainly Hardy here. Hardy is a multiplier to all of your regen. Then we get the recovery mastery for an extra 50 life regen. So we get a lot of bonus life regen soon. Now, another thing you can do at this point, which I forgot about, which I will do, since I have extra life sustain, and I don't really, like I'm not really concerned at all about my life regen, Except for when there's like a ghosted mob with another ghost. Okay, this guy's, I don't even know what he's doing to me, but normally the life regen is totally fine. Uh, there we go. Okay, I don't even know what he just dropped. Let's uh, let's just pick up that Quartz Scepter and... Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm not going to worry about that right now. Welcome to Angry Rare Monsters in Path of Exile. So I want to go back to town and I want to grab Blood Rage. Now, Blood Rage puts an extra degen on your character, which makes it harder for you to sustain, but allows you to do more damage because you gain frenzy charges and you shield charge faster. This is a big plus for me as I like going quickly. Unfortunately, we only have one portal scroll, but that's okay. I'll just buy another one. So I'm going to use that. Go back to town here. First thing I'm going to do, error device lost crashed. Now that's very unfortunate. Sometimes crashing just happens. We'll just call this the new league experience. I think that makes it even better, right? So let's log back into the character. No problem. We can thank our beautiful developers for this. Hi, I'm Chris Wilson from Grinding Gear Games. Hi, I'm Mark Roberts, game director on Path of Exile. So I'm going to grab this Blood Rage. Now we can't use this yet, but that's okay. We'll, we're going to save that for later. Let's go ahead and vendor some of this stuff here. I don't need any of this, so let's just get rid of it. That's actually a dexterity shield. That'd be way better than this one. But we do not have the stuff to make this one work right now. Okay. Get rid of that. Yeah, that's fine. Sure. Okay. So I got what I wanted. I bought Blood Rage. I can't use it yet. That's fine. We're going to go back to the wetlands. Oh, portal scroll. That's what I forgot. Let's go grab a portal scroll. Just in case. I'll grab two. Be well. Okay, let's go back. We're just going to kind of shield charge through here kind of quickly to just get through this. Now, if you want to redo the zone for more XP, control click the zone before you go into it. And by control clicking it, you can create a new instance. This will let you go through the zone again and kill all the monsters to gain the experience. We also have the very big regeneration point that I can show you right now. So if you look at my regen, it's 207. We're going to slap that down and it goes to 249. And then the next point is an even bigger node. So pretty nice. I think, uh, I think we need to go up, right? Is it not down here this way? Or no, no, no maybe it is this way, actually.
Ooh, boots. I like picking these up because there's a chance we can get 15 MS. Oop, nothing. Okie dokie. Making solid progress. I really want to get a dexterity piece right now. There's this awesome amulet called Turquoise Amulet, which is a intelligence dexterity piece. Um, it currently is not here, and I don't actually have any currency, so I can't buy it, but that's okay. I think there might even be a recipe to make it, but I don't feel like doing that. All right, back to the northern forest. Cannot do this yet. There's a zone here called Dread Thicket, but we don't really care about that, so we're just gonna move on. Dex Int Amulet and one Transmute is the recipe. Oh! Okay, that's good to know. Is it um, restricted by rarity? Like, if can I use two white ones to make it, or does it need to be blue, or...? I'm actually gonna keep the shield here. It's three link. Any rarity. Good to know, okay. Very good to know. Thank you for that. Okay, here's the next big regeneration boost. So we're at 251. This will probably go to like 315. Uh, 50 life per second. 308. That's a chromatic. I'm gonna yoink that. You can always use chromatics later when you're trying to get your four link. Okay. Now, same thing with Brutus. The boss we're gonna fight, Vol. Vol is uh, a kind of tanky boss, so you might want to do two MP flasks or. Just know that you may use a portal scroll for mana. Now also people are gonna be asking, why not use Herald of Ash instead of Herald of Lightning? If you go back to what I said earlier, the reasoning for Herald of Lightning is because it allows our rolling magma to shock by giving us lightning damage. Regardless, Herald of Ash does not even work for Righteous Fire. So I personally think Herald of Thunder is just straight better for this campaign run, and we're not gonna use it for that long. In fact, next act, we are dropping it. We go this way, or is it the other way? I think it's this way. Okay, I think I just went in a giant circle. Okay, no, I can't be this way. I guess it's that way? A oh, blue pack. Ooh. Now, spirit shields, these blue ones, can roll damage-oriented uh, affixes on them. We could get plus fire gems, which doesn't work for RF anymore, but it does work for rolling magma. You can also roll percent fire damage, which would be preferred, as that scales both of them. There is a 28% fire damage roll with life, for example. The only downside is I can't shield charge because my colors for shield charge are currently on my shield. So if we get the correct colors somewhere else, we can swap it. Even better, if it has a suffix open for fire res, that means we can even put, um, we can even get some regeneration off of it. So I'll try to be on the lookout for extra three links 
be a little hard. Let's see. Now we are going straight north to get our damage nodes. Always make sure you are replacing your life uh, flasks with the newest ones that drop. You can do a recipe for three for one, but it's a bit... I don't really think it's needed. Basically, if you turn three life flasks of the same tier into the shop, it'll spit you out one of a higher tier. I don't think it's too big of a deal for RF. We have such a big regeneration buffer anyway. Actually, we don't want that one. We're just going to drop that one. Okay, here is Vol, our boss. Now, Vol has three main attacks. It's a big slam. You just move out of the way or Frost Blink on the other side. You can... Uh, there's also this thing where it rains rocks down. It's a little hard to see. You just move around. And then he's got the beam. The beam always shoots consecutively three times. So, boom, boom, boom. What you have to be careful on is the first hit will most likely shock you. The shock is pretty strong, so you want to dodge in general. You can use your Frost Blink to dodge, and remember that by using your Frost Blink, you slow the boss, making it easier to dodge. Um, there's also a crafting recipe you can pick up over here. You want to be picking those up throughout the campaign. Oh, I guess there's also this chilled ground that doesn't really do anything. So there's the slam. I'm just going to move over here. There's the rocks I was talking about. They don't really do anything to us. Okay, sometimes they do something to us. And then he just went into add phase again. He's not even going to do the beam. That's crazy. I don't think I've ever done a vol fight where he doesn't shoot his beam. Okay. Check this one. We don't want that scepter. Those are pretty cool gloves. They're tri-res. Actually, they're kind of fantastic. Um, but the colors right now are a bit weird for me. All right. It is good to feel your warmth again, Ramakor, father of light. Superior giant life flask. I'm gonna just go ahead and swap the flask there. Rogue exiles always drop a ton of loot. Usually. Okay, green, green, red. No life tap, but that can actually work for us. No life taps, a bit yikes, but uh, we can make it work. Just going to eat all of our MP. Oh, we'll go real fast. Real, real fast. Because that's momentum and faster attacks with shield charge. These little things on the icon here are beasts. I'm not going to be covering beasts in this, so you just kill them. Einhard catches them, and then you can do stuff with them later. Oh, I heard the loot filter go off, though. Four alterations. Thank you very much, friend. So a quick way to save a little bit of time here. You have extra portal scrolls. You can actually go to the slums here. Open up a portal. Which takes you directly to the middle of town. Which you can then use later to bounce back. Goodbye. So we're just going to go ahead and vendor and clean up our inventory here. You are a welcome sight, daughter of Namakanu. Good luck to you. Good. Um, so we're going to check the vendors just a little patiently here and see what they've got for sale. So I'm just peeking through. Doesn't seem like anything too interesting here. Um, not really. I mean, we have some shields here, but nothing really too crazy. So, with that being said, let's identify and see what we have here. 10 dexterity. It's kind of cool. I need just a little bit more for blood rage. It's actually already kind of good. So, we're going to do faster attacks, momentum, shield charge, replace my helmet, take the flame wall and the vitality, move them to the side. Did I vendor that shield that I said I was going to use, by the way? Oh, okay, we'll see you later to that shield. Never mind, we're not going to get to use that shield. I, uh, I may have may have accidentally made an oopsies, but that's okay. You know, mistakes are uh, mistakes are important. So shield charge, life tap, momentum, no problem. That shield was unethical anyway. We basically are just deleting it. 
put that back, no problem. And we'll just keep this one to the side for later. Okay, and grab that flame wall back. Okay, cool. So now I could check Clarissa. Does she sell something yet? Some See if she has the... Oh, look at that. Beautiful turquoise amulet. So this takes a chance orb. We are going to need chance orbs, but this is actually such an awesome piece right now. We actually don't have a chance orb though. So we can't actually afford that. What we can do though, is if she, if she has a... She just has this Jade Amulet, and we have a Transmutation, so we can buy that. Do we have an extra Transmutation in here? We do. So now we can try the recipe somebody was suggesting. So, you have one in your inventory? I do, I don't see a chance, or maybe I'm just drunk. It's okay. So we can take the Int and the Dex with a Transmutation. We help. can vendor them together to make a Turquoise. We can then use this Alk Orb we found on the Turquoise. And now we're good to go. So, fire us check, 158, we're good. We can now also use Blood Rage, so I'm gonna put that there. And let's go back to the slums. Okay, now I'm gonna be using Blood Rage to go a little bit faster here. I cannot do this yet. I also like to drop flame wall soon. Um, so we won't be using flame wall too much longer, but do know that we need a red blue link to use the next thing that we want. So the best way to do that um, is gonna probably be doing it on our quartz scepter. Primary reason is because it's a scepter, so it is more likely to roll blues and reds. And it's actually a really good scepter. I think I will probably use this the whole campaign run, not even kidding. Um, so we're probably going to invest into that. In fact, I'll probably do that right now. We're just going to use a jeweler orb. Look at that. Beautiful. And I'm actually going to fuse and we have red blue now. We're good. We're going to want that for our curse that we're going to be picking up here. So we're going to start with flammability and then we're going to move into punishment, but that's a little bit later. Don't forget if you're doing that, you want to turn your auras back on because auras get unequipped if you remove the piece of gear that was using them. Also, two stone rings start dropping a little bit earlier. The only problem with two stone rings is we really want to stack ruby rings. We want the highest fire as possible, but if it gets good stats on it, it's worth using. Okay, still just going straight up here. Uh, over here, there is going to be another lab trial that you can go ahead and do. No shot, this is better. Nope, it's not. That was a local fire, right? Yeah, no, it's not better. What we're mainly looking for is fire damage to spells. Lightning to spells is okay too. Fire is a little bit better. Fire to spells, fire damage, fire damage over time multiplier, plus level of fire gems. Those are all your big, big, big nodes. Please don't freeze me. Oh, I'm frozen. Good thing I'm RF, took no damage. Look at that salad. You see that right there? Those are shield charge colors. We're going to yoink that. That means in the future we can switch. Okay, that is the lab trial. I'm just going to move past that. It's a burning ground trial, nothing special. And then this is Piety here. Piety is going to do a lot of lightning damage. If you don't have good lightning res, she's going to kind of blast you. Now I get to click this here, and back to town. I'm gonna get rid of those. Watch yourself. Okay. Now we're gonna go ahead and grab our flammability here. So we are gonna need punishment for later. You can grab it if you want. I typically just like come back and buy it. So I don't really care too much about this. Then over here, we're going to buy, oops, a daisy, flammability, which is right here for an alteration. 
Okay, I have 18 alterations. We're fine there. See you. Then we're going to go back and we're going to grab a life tap right there for uh, for our um, plan. You can also put this with like uh, Frost Blink, so that works too. If you have like a double link or a triple link, whatever you want to call it. And I will just put this helmet here for now and we'll probably come back to this. Let's go up and hit that. Now, we also get new auras. So, since we cleared that, we have access to determination and purity of elements. I personally love purity of elements. So, I am now going to replace the flame wall that we had. Where's flame wall? Did I already replace flame? There we go. Replace flame wall with that. And we're no longer running Herald of Thunder. You can still run it if you would like. My setup is for more comfortability. It's really cozy. Herald of Thunder gives you more damage, so... That's kind of your choice there. Do note that with Purity of Elements, you're going to be a lot more tanky because it's going to give you all res. It's also going to give you fire res, which will also give you life regen. Also, it will provide you with Shock, Freeze, Ignite, and Chill Immunity. This is really big entering the sewers because there's these mobs here called, uh, there are these monsters called Dischargers which do really heavy lightning damage, and I don't know if they do cold as well, but it can definitely get you killed. Do remember, if you are switching pieces of gear, make sure to look at your fire res. I'm currently 178. The higher you go, the better. Um, even though we're not, like, worrying too much about our other res right now, we will fix that later. So here you can see I have opted out to replace Flame Wall with um, Flammability. Flammability costs no MP because it is on life tap. Flammability, unlike Flame Wall, also benefits our Righteous Fire. At some point here, you also want to get another 3 link that we are going to use for Righteous Fire. But not yet, because we can't access the uh, support gems yet. That's going to be in library a little bit later. There's always one bust before the waypoint. So if you miss the bust, make sure you go back before the waypoint and grab it somewhere over here. And then there's two after. Once you have gained uh, the busts, you want to just go straight north out of here. So now that we got this, there's a ruby ring. Let's identify that. Not. That's got 17 fire res. It's actually like literally the same as what we have with an MP roll. I mean, sure, why not? Boom. Blue pack. I love me some blue packs. Those are triple red gloves, but I don't think I use triple red. That's a four link. We're going to yoink those. This four link here, we could get RF colors. We are not going to invest into it yet because A, we don't have enough support gems unless we want it to go all out on rolling magma. The problem with going all out on rolling magma is the MP cost is already a little tight. So the only link I would kind of accept here is red. So blue, 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 red. The red would be life tap, and then we'd be casting with our life pool. The reason I am not investing into it, though, is simply because boots are priority to have movement speed for me. So it's one of the last pieces of gear that I want to be forced into using because of the colors. I want to typically leave my boot slot open so I can pick up boots off the floor that are rare, identify them, and get higher movement speed. You'll notice I'm skipping a lot in the campaign. My level is pretty much caught up with these mobs, so there's no reason for me to keep farming. Over here is where you get another one of the lab trials. chance or we need those looks like it's on the other side so we're going to zoom to the other side my mana is gone perfect we are nearing damage nodes we're close very close. So over here, 
There's a waypoint kind of in the middle. Ooh, that's that's a nice body armor, but it's too many reds for us to probably use. Like that, and we're good. I'm gonna identify this body armor. It actually hit 18 fire res. It is better than this, but I mean, it's just straight up better, so I guess we'll just keep it. Sure. It's more armor. I don't think I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna drop it. I want it, but it's unlikely I'm gonna use it, so we're just gonna trash it. I would recommend you stash it. The thing is, you would rather have a pure armor body armor and then have your links on your gloves and your helmet. That way you can still use a like a chunky armor body armor because energy shield doesn't really do anything for us. The RF just burns it. Technically, it gives you a little bit of damage because it's boosting your effective life and RF scales off of your life and energy shield. But I'd say the armor is more important. Grab this waypoint. I'm going to go back and vendor some of this stuff here and also um, grab a skill point. So first, let me just hold on. Let's get uh, some space here. Good. And then vendor that. And then keep these boots for later. We're going to put those right there. All right. Now we're looking for... Uh, oh, actually, wow, it's right there. Looking for this thing. Usually it's like always on the opposite side for me, but this time we got lucky. Sometimes lucky. Okay, now we're going to go back to that waypoint we found prior, right over here at Battlefront. And we are going to go ahead and run up into the Solaris Temple. This is where you get a very strong craft for damage um, for this build in the campaign. I think this is where you unlock fire damage to spells. So if you look at the modifier my weapon has, I believe you unlock that. I could be incorrect though. This is the eternal way, pretty and lifeless. And there's the waypoint. Very nice. At 28, we're going to pop on this body armor. It's not a bad idea to check the vendors every so often for links. I've been a little bit lazy, so I've kind of avoided it, but it's not a bad idea. I always have this, like, philosophy where if I'm not struggling, I don't stop. I just kind of keep on going. This is mainly because I like to really get into maps rather than extend my campaign duration. Because it's inevitable that a four link will most likely drop that's usable for us. Damage nodes. Wow, I've never found it this early either. Holy, what is this? It's a crazy layout. Rolling magma is hitting int requirements. Okay. So, unfortunately, I won't be getting int for a little bit on my tree. I will in a couple of levels, but not immediately. So, what this is telling me is I want to go craft intelligence on one piece of gear using a transmutation. It's very important you keep up to date with your gem levels as spellcasters because this is where they get most of their damage. Thankfully, the quest reward from this quest is actually giving us a rare amulet, but there's a chance our amulet rolls dexterity and intelligence. Unlikely, but it could happen. Dexterity, okay. I don't think it's better than what I have though. So I'd rather just go craft intelligence on this current one. So I'm going to go do that. Okay, so we're going to just move over. Craft intelligence right here. And I just like this little one here for an... Oh, it's an augment, not even a transmutation. Okay. And then we'll click this. And over there is the crafting recipe where I just was. 
Uh, you just go a little bit further in. So to show you where it is, if you are right here, you want to just go right inside here. And there should be a crafting recipe right here for you. Now, since we unlocked that crafting recipe, I'm going to go to my hideout and I'm going to go ahead and check if I have what's available. Craft fire damage. Now, normally, I would recommend that you craft flat fire damage to spells, but I have fire damage to spells on this, so I'm going to spend some of my alterations to craft fire damage instead. Hello. I'm just going to vendor some of this other gear. Keep your eyes sharp. Okay. Let's see here. Let me identify this. We don't want it, so let's go down into the sewers. Make sure you have your auras on. You're good to go. Yeah, this guy can be a little scary. He does insane amounts of fire damage. I don't even know if you actually need to kill him because we don't use any of the gems right away, but I just am used to it, so I kill him anyway. My place is at God's side. We could maybe use these gloves. Let's see what they've got. Oh, life, dex, fire res. Okay, those are... Uh, those are some spicy gloves, not gonna lie. We can just go like this and just put them on and yep. If you're running out of wisdom scrolls, you can alternatively sell some of these whetstones or uh, armor scraps to get you some wisdom scrolls as well. some damage remember now that we have purity of elements we can safely open all strong boxes we do not have to worry about them at all uh, this guy doesn't really drop anything and he hits really hard so I would skip this guy but yeah he literally drops nothing thanks Cole that's Brutus's big brother or younger brother actually maybe you can pick up jewels if you see them. If you saw there a cobalt jewel dropped, it's highly unlikely you're going to use it. It would have to hit basically a life roll with an increased damage or a multiplier for you. Um, or just like a double damage roll. So examples would be fire damage, area damage. And even in that case, you have a lot of damage notes early to pick up. You don't really need the jewels. So the life flask that removes burning is different from purity of elements. Righteous fire burns your character, but it's not an ignite. Purity of elements makes you immune to ignite, but not burning. Those are very different mechanics. Oh, okay. This is hype. This is a, oh, this is not hype. So I thought this was hype, but the problem is this is an armor or sorry. This is an energy shield evasion body. The problem with energy shield evasion is it's weighted to roll green and blue links is actually good for fire trap which we'll get later but it's not good for righteous fire because we can't really the only green we would want is swift affliction and we're not going to worry about that in the campaign now once you're in here once you go up you never want to go back down so you always want to try to just keep going up up will take you to the next boss this land has forgotten part of its strength. I will remind it. Colossal flasks.
Okay, I like taking chance to shock, freeze, and ignite. This is only going to make the rolling magma even smoother. Oh, so when you get here, you always want to take the way with only one wagon. If you take the way with two wagons, you hit a dead end. Remember, essences are worth killing, especially if you can kill them quickly. Every essence you kill is basically like an orb of alchemy. So you can pick up four link gear or three link gear you find and just throw an alchemy orb at it. And that will get you, um, that will get you like extra properties on your item. Now that was a gem mob that we killed. Those don't exist anymore. They got nerfed. See you later. Uh, we know exactly who to thank for that. Hi, I'm Mark Roberts, game director on Path of Exile. So from here, we're just going to keep moving forward. And we want to go ahead and get to piety. There's like this giant, like, uh, this thing right here, this giant door. I'm actually curious because I'm splitting my audio. I don't know if YouTube hears what I'm playing with the Go XLR. I'm not sure where it's coming through. I'd have to go look after. Okay, blue colossal. Like to identify, maybe get bubbling or seething. No, but that's still okay. Okay, here is Piety. Normally she's a little scary because of shock, but Purity of Elements makes us immune to shock. So even though we only have like 38 lightning res, she's not really gonna do too much to us. Uh, the cold phase kind of hurts, but for RF, I don't really care. Don't stand in front of her during this. This is a bad example. You're supposed to hide behind the pillars, but again, we're very tanky right now, so I don't really mind. Here's fire phase. You gotta be careful. She does stacking damage when she hits you, but again, for RF, doesn't really matter. Ooh, a Rukatiki amulet. We're not gonna use that, though. So pick this up. I'm gonna log back out. Here we get a beautiful skill point, so let's grab that. Okay. And let's vend her. Thirty-nine life fire res. It's kind of cool, but I don't want you. Go away. Okay, I want to grab my currency here because the place we're going to next is going to require the currency in our inventory. With that being said, I am going to just go ahead and peek the shop here and see if there's any four links since we did not find any for our build yet. It doesn't look like it here. I'll just tap over one more. There's four link armor again, but that doesn't help us. So nope, no four links. That's okay. Let's move on. Stay out of the shadows. Stay fine. Okay. Let's go ahead and put that point into Divine Judgment, Giga Damage. Now from here, there are a couple ways you can traverse the skill tree for this build. I'm gonna show you the way I personally like, but remember there is a degree of flexibility. I think, oh, it's directly to the right here actually of the waypoint, we're gonna go there. Okay. Here we wanna go ahead and do library. There's also a waypoint here and there's also a trial here. This is the last labyrinth trial for the ascendancy. I like to wait on the ascendancy to get some some extra thickness before we go fight Azaro to really face roll him. Okay, grab this waypoint and go left. This usually gets you to library. Now from here, you need to find the waypoint, and then you gotta go past the waypoint to get to the next zone. Okay, so here is the waypoint. Oh, never mind, it's on this side. Okay, just kidding, it's this side? Nope, okay, just kidding, it's um not this side at all. All right, I totally knew that, yep. I absolutely would have guessed that by looking at the map layout. <laughs> uh, we're gonna ID this weapon. Actually, I mean, there's no chance that this blue weapon is gonna be better, so we're just gonna drop it. 
can check the ruby ring. The ruby ring might be better. It is not. See you guys later. So at around this time, it's not as important to pick up items constantly. Um, we're going to be generating enough wealth from just raw monster drops. So you don't have to constantly like keep going back to town to selling all the blues. You can still do it if you want, but up to a certain point, you're just not going to need it anymore. Also, don't have to talk to the person for the quest. So right here, I'm going to stop for just a second and explain how you can go with the tree. If you want to be a little more tanky, you can take some life nodes, but I don't like taking the life nodes yet until later. If you want to get more um, like AOE and LE res, you can go into Templar, but I also like waiting on that. If you want to get more damage, you can come right into Spiritual Aid. But we're going to go into that later. I personally like going straight up here to Holy Fire so I can grab the extra intelligence along the way. And Holy Fire is a very strong node in general. So that's what I'm going to do first. There is background noise because I have a fan on and I live in Texas. It's very hot here. Okay. New belts. I could take a new belt. We're still using the, like, chain belt we picked up in Act 1 off the floor. Um, let's see here. Crusader helmets. Sure. So you just gotta find four pages here, and then we are done with this. So we can see our last page is right there. Alright. Portal out. Go back to the library here. Okay, now at this point here... I'm going to go ahead and grab Arrogance, which is right here. So now we're going to take a little moment to stop and look at the POB. So at this point now, we are 31. So we're going to open the skill section 21 to 40. Make sure you do the same thing for the others. Don't forget to do library quest. Click here for gems to purchase at library and you can see everything that's listed. Now, you don't technically need to grab a couple of, well, then there's also this one here that's bonus gems. These are not as important as these. These are more mandatory. We need Fire Trap right now because Fire Trap we want to level so we can stop using Rolling Magma. So that's mandatory. Efficacy and Elemental Focus are support gems for Righteous Fire. Those are also mandatory. So we're going to grab Efficacy and Elemental Focus. All right. Then Swift Affliction is not as important, but is going to be used later. So it's not mandatory to pick it up right away. So I'm going to hold off on it. However, there's also Armageddon Brand, Trap and Mind Damage. So Trap and Mind Damage is very important because it's the strongest link for Fire Trap. And then Armageddon Brand, you can choose to replace Rolling Magma with Armageddon Brand. Armageddon Brand will do more area, uh, area clear, but less single target. So I'm going to take this, put it over here, and... Drop Rolling Magma on the floor, and it's gone forever. Now, there's one more gem to buy, which is Burning Damage. However, you can actually get Burning Damage from here after you have completed the quest. So we're going to grab this Burning. It doesn't really matter if you get it from there or not. That's entirely up to you. So now that we have all of our links for Righteous Fire, we or not links, but gems, we want to actually try to get Righteous Fire going. And look at that. There is a beautiful silken garb right here that's four linked. Only problem, we don't have a transmute. So let's go ahead and try to make a transmute really quickly. 
Yes. A transmute was seven portals. We can afford that. See you. Now, you remember those chromatics that we've been holding? We have 13 of those. We're going to need them right now. So I'm going to go ahead and snag this body armor. And we are going to use a chrome to get one red. That's what we want. Blue, 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 red. That gives us righteous fire, efficacy, elemental focus, burning damage. Perfect. So now, because we have an essence, we're going to go ahead and essence the body armor to get some properties on it. If you want to use armor scraps first, you can. Because it's pure energy shield, it doesn't matter too much. So there is our body armor. It has a suffix open for fire res. I can tell by looking at it. But we don't have a transmute, so we're not going to worry about the suffix for fire res yet. So let's go ahead and put in righteous fire. Where is our righteous fire? Okay. Righteous fire, burning damage, elemental focus, efficacy. Swap it with current body armor. All right. Now, remember those boots that we had? We're going to take a look at these boots here. We're going to throw one chromatic orb at them. And now we have colors for Armageddon brand. So do we have any currency to make them rare? We do not. Do we have any alk orbs? We have no alchemy orbs. So the only thing I don't like about this is we don't have any movement speed on them. So I could come over here and take a look-see and see how much it is to craft movement speed. So this movement speed roll is only three augmentations and doesn't cost a lot. I would like to normally alk these first because there's a good chance it has a prefix open, but it doesn't matter too much. So we're just going to craft movement speed on them and slap them on over the current boots. Now we have to be careful because we just lost 30 fire res. So we're going to need to make sure we get some more transmutes. So maybe we will in fact pick up a few more items. So let's take a look here. I'm identifying these because they're rare. They could very much have much better stats on them overall. Like this is life regen. This is actually pretty nice. Um, has no life, but it has life regen and I kind of need life regen right now. So blood rage over there, vitality here, purity of elements on, and we'll just swap that. Uh, surely this belt is gonna be better than what we have. It has no life, but it has suffix open for uh, fire res for later. So we'll swap that. Let's go ahead and clean up our inventory here. We don't want any of this. Uh, yeah, let's just vendor that, sure. Also vendor this one. We'll just get rid of that. Okay, what else? We're going to take off these three links here, put them over here. Vendor. There is a Quicksilver recipe. I always forget about the Quicksilver recipe, so I'm going to vendor this one as well. Okay, so now comes the next part. We want to go ahead and grab a life tap for our Armageddon brand. If you're not on a life tap setup, expect to be using quite a few MP potions. This will get alleviated later. So for now, we're just going to... Okay, so we're going to sacrifice our remaining um, portals for a transmute. Okay, that's all right, though, because now we're going to vendor, okay, some of our whetstones. So let's just take five, vendor those. We get back our wisdoms, and now we have some portals. There we go. See, nice and easy. Now we can go ahead and purchase... We can go ahead and purchase the life tap that we wanted. Now, in the POB, you'll notice it says not to level the life taps. It is okay to level them, but eventually when you have life tap on Righteous Fire, you want to make sure they're not being leveled anymore. You don't have to worry too much about it. It's mainly for, like, mapping, basically. So now we just need to get some gear to uh, to level these. So we need basically here, if we look, the most important one is fire trap and trap and mine. So we need two greens. So anything with two greens. Um, I mean, I could just buy this for a whetstone. That's totally fine. We can just do that. This is a wisdom scroll. So there. okay, we'll just level those and not worry about them. We don't need Herald of Thunder. We don't need Flame Wall. Arrogance should be level 2, but it's not a big priority, so I'll just put it there to level. Um, punishment, you could level. Doesn't really matter. I don't need this wave of conviction. Sharp, We're going to continue onward. Remember that we do really want to get some transmutation orbs. So with Armageddon brand, the way it works, assuming it's even going to get to hit anything, because RF is probably going to kill everything, you just click it one time, and it will just keep going. You don't have to spam it. Up at the top left here, you can see your charges. 
We can only have one on a target at a time, so you really don't have to spam it. I cannot do this yet. Also, again, we're going to go back and do that uh, attack without moving. So now we are on the lookout for a fire trap accessory or a fire trap gear. So fire trap gear, ideally, we want green, 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 red or green, green, blue, red. Over here is our lab trial. So I'll just show you it really fast. You're just going to basically go over here, click this, and then you're done. Then you go back into the portal. So we are pushing more towards getting to Dominus. We don't care about this. This is a side quest I'm not really going to do. And here is the door. On a side note, if you guys are enjoying the playthrough video, feel free to hit that follow button. It really helps a lot. Or actually, sorry, subscribe button on YouTube. We're also streaming this live on Twitch right now. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and look at our skill points. We're going to go ahead and put those in. Okay, so we're going to slap that right over here into more intelligence. Oh, yeah, I don't need the decanter, thanks. That was a quest from somewhere on the docks. We don't do that either. It's I don't even know what it is. It's like some random rare item, but I don't really care for it. Now, over here on the right, uh, we had a gem mob earlier, and the gem mob kind of, like, boosted our gem levels a lot. Remember, you want to make sure you can level your caster gems. Those are the most important. So, shield charge, doesn't matter. All these are gated by level anyway. Being gated by level is fine. The only one that's not right now is Blood Rage. Doesn't matter if you can't level Blood Rage, it's not mandatory by any means. Fire Trap, however, you need to have the Dex for, but we're not there yet, so that's okay. I like to grab the waypoint here in case you crash or die to Dominus. It can help a lot. those of you who are wondering when we're going to be ascending, after we kill Dominus, we're going to do a few more zones, and then we ascend after we get our stone golem. So you want to start having an open red socket. Thankfully, we have two open reds right here because we don't really need that arrogance there. It's not a big priority. I cannot do this yet. It's always easy to check how your life regen is. I always get questions about how much life regen do I need. It's an incredibly difficult question for me to answer because everyone has a different value of HP, a different amount of flat regeneration, a different amount of percent regeneration. So honestly, the easiest way to check, look at your life regen. As you're playing and you're casting your spells on life tap, are you happy with how fast you're regenerating? If not, prioritize more regeneration. As a benchmark to help, I'm currently at 356 life regeneration with no buffs on. My Armageddon brand DPS is currently... Uh, 328 to 331 to 543. I don't think that matters too much. The Righteous Fire is sitting at 3,257. Now, Dominus does very heavy lightning damage, so you want to be careful on this fight. You don't really want to face tank him. These, remember the colors we were talking about Fire Trap? These, like this base right here, is the perfect base for it because it is a blue-green base. So it will primarily have the colors we want. I guess technically we wanted green, 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 red. So maybe it would be better for me to run armor. Actually, I think pure evasion would be the easiest to get the colors, but this will suffice. This is good. Okay. None of these should really hurt too much if you have good res. Ironically, the one you got to be the most careful for is this guy, the fire guy. He can hit you with all of his projectiles at the same time. 
After you kill those three, you're going to get three little miniature bosses. At this point, if your character is geared, they literally should not do anything. You can just sit here and sip away at your drink, drink your coffee, move into their face. They should not do anything to you whatsoever. You literally should not have to press any buttons. If your regeneration is good enough, you can just bully them. Doesn't matter. Have you ever seen the true face of God this guy, on the other hand, a little different. When he says the touch of God, you run. This, you can tank, but I'd recommend kind of moving around a little. Touch of God, you run away, then you just go back in. So again here, you just kind of strafe him. Move away, go back in. And then he goes into the next phase. So next up, we're going to be getting three nice damage nodes, along with bonus regeneration on Holy Fire. After Holy Fire, I like coming across over here to Acrimony. What this does is allows us to get Dexterity and Damage Over Time Multiplier and less damage taken from over time. So this boss here is second phase of Dominus. You always want to be inside this bubble. If you go outside the bubble, you get stacks of Corrupted Blood, and he will actually charge you and pull you in. You always want to just stay inside here. If you have enough regeneration, you will trivialize the fight. You don't have to worry. The mobs that run out to attack you literally just die to your righteous fire. Should be totally fine. If you are dying to the degen of the Corrupted Blood, he also auto-attacks you and applies Corrupted Blood. You can just go ahead and use a portal to go back out. Follow a dead river to the foot of Kitava's kingdom. Just how the elders okay. Over on Blood Aqueducts, this is a nice shield charge simulator right here. Pretty much just shield charging our way through. If you find a side area, like a little bit to the right or left, there's always a blue pack of mobs, so it's a good time to gear up and get more XP. So, see if I can show you an example. It should probably happen over here. Oh, that's a very nice piece for RF later. So this is an armor energy shield. The reason I like this is it's four linked. It's likely to hit blue, 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 red. Not as likely as a pure, uh, pure armor, sorry, pure energy shield, but... This would allow us to use an actual armor piece rather than energy shield, which will make us more tanky against physical. The way I can tell what rolls what is based off the attribute requirement. When it requires strength and int, it's more likely to roll blue and red. When it's pure int, it's blue. When it's dex, it's green. Over here, you have a chicken boss. You can check your damage by killing it before it attacks. If so, you're doing great. If not, no problem, you're still doing great. So right here is an example of where there will be a guaranteed blue pack, right here. Okay. We have just a few more zones, and then we go and ascend. So I'm just going to go clean up my inventory here and vendor stuff. Remember, if we get extra transmutations, we still want to craft some fire res on some gear. It's also much better to take a leather belt for base life over any other base. But remember, the more life you have, the less life regeneration you have because of the way Righteous Fire works. Remember that late game, this will change. It's not really the case. It's just in the beginning game. Big thing I like to do now at this point is pretty much just skip everything that's not a rare or a blue pack. Rares are susceptible to having the Arc Nemesis loot conversion, which basically means they drop good stuff. They can drop like a whole bunch of good stuff. That's how I've been getting more like transmutations or not transmutations, sorry, alterations and things like that, basically. The white mobs are the last on the priority. Thankfully, with RF, as we're just shield charging through, they're all going to die anyway. So we get the XP. Now, this brings me to another topic here. It's an easy way to tell how your righteous fire is being affected. So remember how I told you at the beginning of the game? that are the beginning of the playthrough, fire damage to spells is better for single target. This is still true to this current point. However, we're getting to the point where since RF is doing a lot of damage now, we don't really care too much about fire to spells. You can still scale it, especially if you're dual wielding, it will help a lot with the Armageddon brand. But when it comes to scaling Righteous Fire, all you really have to do is take a look at your tooltip. So mine is 3418, 
when I put a fire damage node in here, a fire multi, it will go up 3538. That's an easy way to tell if a piece of gear is better. You can literally unequip it and hover like, like equip a different piece of gear, look at your damage and see how it scales your RF. Normally, this is not a good thing to say, but with RF, because we don't scale off of like penetration, attack speed, cast speed, critical, um, it's very accurate. Amethyst Flask is okay, but we're not really going to use it. Portal back. I'm also going to keep this pair of gloves, because this pair of gloves is kind of like the helmet I was talking about. So we're going to put that right over here. Although it's, I'm more likely to probably use the helmet, because my helmet's not that good and my gloves are really good. So let's put those in as well. And uh, let's see what this has. It's got int, but we don't need int anymore. Now that we're going up, like up on the north side, we're getting a bunch of intelligence. So click this seal, run across over here, and grab your stone golem. Stone golem is going to give us a nice bump of life regeneration. Put him right there. He will die occasionally, but he will give you a lot of regeneration. Also, I'm sure a couple of you are wondering how my Righteous Fire is active when it's not on my bar. I put it on my control bar so it doesn't clog my main hotkey bar. Whenever I enter a zone, out of force of habit, I hold control and press E, which turns on my Righteous Fire. It's kind of just like second nature to me because I shield charge with E. And right when I get into a zone, I want to shield charge anyway. So that's how I kind of set it up every time. So all we're doing here is we're going to clear until we get to the waypoint. We also are going to get a bonus skill point and then we're ascending. This ascendancy is going to make your experience playing Path of Exile amazing when it comes to gearing. And I won't spoil yet, but this is a great thing for new players. Even in advanced and experienced players, it's totally fine for. The Chieftain Ascendancy does some really heavy lifting when it comes to your gearing, and it only gets better and better. You'll notice, though, that versus a Juggernaut or a Inquisitor, we won't have nearly as much regeneration. Inquisitor gets Pious Path, which just is crazy for regeneration, and Juggernaut gets untiring. Chieftain doesn't really get this, but Chieftain can scale higher max resistance, so they kind of acquire the regeneration at a later stage in the game. Now, we're in Mines Level 2. Mines Level 2 has a skill point, so we don't want to go to the next place without getting the skill point. Um... I'm not really sure how to explain where it is. I usually just shield charge around until I get, um, like, until I see the little yellow exclamation mark. Also, if you see this modifier, detonates nearby corpses. This is getting nerfed in the patch. I don't know if it's getting nerfed for strong boxes, but as a force of habit, whenever I click a strong box, I always frost blink out of it, just in case of detonate dead mechanics. Nothing else really does anything. You also notice that I'm taking a lot of damage. This is primarily because I don't have any armor right now because my body armor is pure energy shield. This is where having a, a armor body armor would help massively if I could get the right colors on other pieces of gear. Have no fear, at least we have a lot of regeneration. Nope, oh, that's a chrome, I like those, yoink. Okay, this yellow thing is what we need. You don't have to fight this guy, you can if you want. Be careful of his little spiraling hammers, they can do a lot of damage. So now we're just going to go ahead and get to the next waypoint, and then we're going to go ascend. We should trivialize the labyrinth. I'm going to put that point in right... Oh, got to be a little careful now. The mobs are actually doing damage. Put that point up here. You can take Ignite Chance if you want. I don't really think it's worth it. I would rather the fire damage. I cannot do this yet. Now this guy has a scary explosion. 
it does heavy fire damage and puts an ignite on you. It's a nice test for your righteous fire build. Do you take damage? No? All right, you're doing the doing a good job. Also, when these mobs here have this little purple outline, they do a lot of damage because they deal bonus chaos. Nobody really has chaos resistance at this stage. So if you're getting chunked by the little purple mobs or the mobs with the little purple little dots, it's because of that reason. So Blood Rage, we don't really care about leveling. Remember, I'm just using it for the frenzy charges and attack speed along with the cast speed. I'm just going to right click it. And by right clicking it, it permanently gets set over here. And you'll see that the Blood Rage is now sitting there. It does not pop up on here anymore. And this should be a very big node for damage and gives us some life regen. So let's go ahead and go over here. Check our Righteous Fire tooltip. 3890. This should put it to 4.1. 4.266. So that's a lot. 4,266. So from here, a couple of options. If you want more raw damage, you can grab Spiritual Aid. Although it will take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 points. If you want to keep following what I'm doing, I'm going to be moving over here to grab Acrimony, Agility, and the reduced damage taken over time. I prefer doing this because if you get hit by Dex requirements for Fire Trap, you can just allocate a skill tree point rather than being stuck, kind of. We're also going to go ahead and Vendor whatever we have. Yes. And since we have six transmutations, before we go into Labyrinth, let's go put some Fire Res on any extra gear. So we can put Fire Res here. A lot of this gear will end up getting replaced, so we're only making ourselves stronger for right now. That's triple suffix. This has a suffix open. I'll even just put a life roll on this piece right here. And I can put a life roll on this piece right here. Okay, aura is back on. Into the labyrinth we go. Now there is another option actually. Oops, wrong spot. There is another option in terms of your um, your skill tree where maybe I would have done this first, I'm not sure. If you feel like you're taking too much damage, instead of um, instead of going for where I'm going now at Acrimony, you can take one, two, three at Sovereignty, drop Vitality and run Determination. This is what we'll be doing after, but do note that you will lose life regeneration doing this, so I typically like to get Acrimony first. Since we don't really have much armor right now, and our Eli Res is not amazing, we do want to make sure that we try to avoid Azaro's attacks. I also don't really care too much for the Labyrinth, so I pretty much hug right, brute force and just shield charge through until I'm at the end. It also may be advantageous to not run Blood Rage here because the traps deal percent life damage and they may hurt you quite a bit. At this point in time, if you're following this in the new league and you have a couple chaos, consider buying a Kikizuru ring. It will give you incredible life sustain. A Pyre ring will also give you very good damage. Okay, so what I like doing here is I pretty much stare at Azaro and then Frost Blink through him. So, Frost Blink because he jumped, go back on him, kind of look at him in the face, Frost Blink to the other side, look at him in the face, he's faced. Every 33% you do, he kind of will, you do like 33%, then he goes down, and then he pops up again in the next phase. And um, I would talk about what is happening with the adds, but every day Labyrinth has a different set of stuff. So in that instance, we had lieutenants. I don't actually know what they do. If you kill him, he might get buffed or he doesn't get buffed. I kind of, I don't really remember all of Labyrinth mechanics. I just kind of, I just kind of bully him. So this is going to take me here. So instead, I might be able to just go this way and go through. I'm not sure. Oh, maybe it's not worth it. We'll see.
Okay, this takes us right to trial two. Comes to strike, an emperor strikes without hesitation. Things that slumber to entertain never be to dance with death. I feel so weird, man. I'm wearing like a pink outfit with a bucket on my head and like some really outdated tattered cloth for underwear. The the like regular character MTX is just <laughs> I don't know, man. It's archaic. <laughs> I feel like a caveman. <laughs> yeah, not sure what's up with that. The emperor who sits alone on his throne. So this stuff hurts you. If you have good regen, you can tank it with righteous fire. Normally this burning ground does like a pretty heavy degen, so just be wary of that. Do you know for players who are playing this build, it is designed more to be a tanky, very cozy, fast map gear build. It does fall short with single target when compared to other builds. That doesn't mean you can't do content, it just means it'll be slower. On the flip side, you have a massive buffer of life regeneration, so you never really have to worry about running out of flasks. An aspirant can afford to be promising. An emperor must Our keep road is the most devious trap of them all. Okay, cross blink away, cross blink again, cross blink again. You do have to be a little careful because sometimes he'll target the golem and sometimes he'll target you. You are free. All right. Mm, probably not going to use most of this stuff, so I'm just going to move on. Maybe the shield? Probably not. No. This the, the gear probably would be get uh, better, but the problem with the gear is that. I am kind of tied to my links, and I care more about the links than my gear. So I'm going to just click the Chieftain Ascendancy. Take a look-see here. This is actually pretty cool, the Coiled Staff. I'm also going to take the Belt here, uh, but we don't want that. So Now, over here, I would recommend doing the Transfigured Gem on certain gems that are worth a lot of money. You'd have to go look and get them ahead of time. For the sake of this run, we're just going to be putting Quality on Righteous Fire. Every X amount of quality, I think it's four, gives a radius bump, which helps your area of effect. So now we're just going to move on. Okay, now we get some fun stuff. Here's where Chieftain kind of kicks off. So you see how our res is 4352? By taking this node first that I like taking, we will never have to worry about cold and lightning res ever again. We're done. So we grab life regen here into sallow cleansing water and 50% of my fire res goes to my cold and lightning, which means I should be at like, I don't know, 106 cold res, sorry, 130. So we're we're done, we're, we're capped res, don't have to worry about it. You continue stacking fire resistance. You don't look for cold res, you don't look for lightning, you just go fire and chaos. And that's it, this is why this is so comfy. So later on when Katava lowers our resistance, Excellent. you don't have to worry about it. Just keep stacking fire resist. This is a nice pair of boots. It's got 15 MS, but unfortunately we can't use it over the current one. So I'm going to just fender it. It's a nice helm, 52 life with 52 life with regen with fire res uh, open suffix. Yoink, let's do that. Fire resistance. Thank you. Purity of elements and vitality swap. See you later. Okay, life regeneration check with stone golem. We're at 548. Okay, now you got Doreso and Comb. It's up to you. I'm just going to go Doreso first. These are two little mini bosses. Uh, this dog here hits pretty hard with physical, so be a little careful for him. You 
can explain to new players why you have such comfy crafting in a hideout. What do you mean? They, everyone has a crafting bench, so they just go to their hideout and uh, use the crafting bench? So we're getting to the point where we want to drop Vitality. Now, in the past, I did not drop Vitality and I went with an Arrogance Vitality. You can still do this, but Chieftain is not as tanky as Juggernaut at this stage in the game. So I prefer to have more maximum life. But that's what Arrogance is for, is to be used with Vitality for people who need additional regeneration. We're also now leveling up our Fire Trap so we can replace Armageddon Brand with Fire Trap. Ambush! But I turned off channel points. How did that happen? Please don't do that. Welcome to the Grand Arena of Theopolis. It is here that I first laid eyes upon my true purpose. Somehow they turn back on, that's weird. Okay, 37, zone level is 38, so we can kill a few more mobs. Over here we should have the little triple boss. Okay, drop a portal in case you die. The rest of it's pretty simple. Don't stand on these swords and move out, like move out of the way. Basically, just don't get hit. If you stand on the swords, they do constant damage to you. The golem will probably die on this fight, so pay attention to your golem because he likes to just face tank. new belts helpers so we're just gonna vendor that what about this one 44 life with life regen i mean that's better than this it gives us life and the the life regen cancels out the lack of fire res we just lose some armor that's the only problem you know what i'll just leave it as is Death, i'm watching you four link int base body armor in the arena we already have a four-link int body armor, though. Is it a hi hybrid? Oh, it's a hi- Oh, that's not four-linked. Baited. Don't ever listen to your chat. They like to bait you. If it was four-link, it would trigger on the filter. The ancestors would weep to see what Calm has created here. Okay. Let us keep on going. Now, as for when you switch to Fire Trap, when you have a four link available for Fire Trap, it's a good time to switch. However, you also want the gem to get a couple of levels. You can do this by looking at the level requirement of the gem compared to, for example, the level requirement of uh, like the gem you're using now. Does that sort of make sense? So like if you look at Fire Trap and it says required level 32, it's pretty close to your level. But if it says like required level four, then it like doesn't work, for example.
some shields. I cannot carry this. Mm, I mean, I'm not gonna use them. They would probably be like way better than what I have, but we're not gonna use them. Just gonna stick with our current gear because it works. Okay, we're going towards Acrimony now for some more damage. I'll take that, thank you very much. Searing Bond is another gem you can use alongside what we're doing, but I feel like our damage is more than enough, so I'm not gonna clog our sockets with more gems when everything is working. I heard a four link. Embroidled gloves, perfect colors already. Yoink, we're gonna take those. Those are perfect colors. And guess what? Hatred Essence. This is Cold Res. We don't really care about Cold Res because, again, we want fire, but I think it's better than having nothing. So what I can try to do here is go with an Armor Evasion Body Armor for Fire Trap and then switch my Righteous Fire to these gloves. That would allow us to be much more tanky. Holy gem mob. Sad those don't exist anymore. Over here, there's geysers that shoot like from like basically towards you, so kite them on the side that doesn't have geysers or just run in a circle. Okay. We're just going to go ahead and vendor some of this stuff here. See ya. Um, as for these gloves, let's see what happens. It's got fire res, it has prefix open for life. It's okay. We'll save them for now. I'm not going to use them yet. Now we're going into the piety fight. Got to be careful. We don't really have any armor yet. ID hits very hard with physical damage. Also, this area will have a lot of monsters that bleed you, but just pay attention to that. You take bonus damage from bleeding while moving. Ooh, a shrine. Just has a nice check here. With our frenzy charges up currently, our RF is <clears throat> 5,800. And these gloves are actually perfect fire trap gloves. This is fire trap, swift affliction, Trap and Mine, Life Tap. So we don't even need to worry about the other gloves. We can just straight up replace it with these. That means we can move our Righteous Fire to our boots, and then we can use an actual armor body armor. So you know what? Let's do that right now. So let's take a look at Fire Trap. Fire Trap is 38 and we are 39. That's good enough. So let's also go ahead and just alk these gloves here since we don't really have anything else. I could use the cold res, but I'd rather do this. 68 life, fire res, I'll take it, that's huge. So, trap in mine, fire trap. Let's go ahead and go back to here and grab the life tap, and we wanna go back to library to grab that swift affliction. If you're already leveling the swift affliction, you're a little bit ahead, 
If you have a blue instead of three greens, you can go control destruction. Okay. I'm going to just replace that. Now, we are getting hit with dex requirements for Blood Rage. What I'm going to do now is just remove that damage node we had before and put it into this. Now, again, we don't care about Blood Rage, but I kind of want to still use it for right now, so that's why I'm doing that. Here I've got Frost Blink, Summon Stone Golem, and Arrogance. Remember, Arrogance is not a priority link. So what we're going to go ahead and do now is take Armageddon Brand, take Combustion, and take Ignite Prolif, and see you later. At the moment, Combustion is much better than Swift Affliction. At our next Ascendancy, it will not be. So if you have that blue, it's actually better. If you don't have that blue, it's fine. So we're going to take LE Focus, Efficacy, Righteous Fire, and Burning Damage. And now I'm just going to go ahead and slap on this Body Armor because it's just infinitely better than this one. So we'll just do that. And we're going to take the Stone Golem, put the Stone Golem over here, um, let's see, what else do we have? So we don't have a blue for Frost Blink, and that is not okay with me, or I'm not okay with that. So what I'm going to do here is try to get four sockets on this, because I actually really like this. Okay, and now I need two blues. I double-clicked by accident there. Okay, we got three blues. Vitality, Purity of Elements, Frost Blink. Okay, let me go ahead and go back and fix my links really fast. Okay. Chill charge is good. Cross blink should be right here. Turn on that. Make sure fire traps there. Check it. Vendor, 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 vendor. Although I could just essence this. Um, it's got cold. It's got chaos. It doesn't really have anything special. We're just gonna vendor it. See you later. Okay, here we go. Generation check is 533. I cannot do this yet. What we care about for Fire Trap is the damage of the Burning Ground. So my Burning Ground says it states uh, 2,600 fire damage per second. That number will go up a lot as time goes on. Okay, drop a portal here. Very dangerous fight. Don't be directly melee on her, but make sure your RF is hitting her. If you are directly melee, it's okay, but look at the damage she does, for example. She's very chunky. Careful for this beam right here, and throw your fire traps at those little things. You can pretty much rotate like this, fire trapper, and then one, two, three. Or if you want to just deeps her down, you just literally smack her in the face. Your stone golem will die. I actually think it's better to ignore those. Go in a circle so you're not backtracking. And just throw fire traps like this. It usually works out just fine. If the beam catches you off guard, frost blink to the other side. Okay, next up, we are coming to <clears throat> three mini-bosses. I like to go right side first, but it, it really doesn't matter. Right side has one mini-boss, left side has two. I'd say to take a check at your resistance to make sure you have good lightning res, but we're chieftain, so we're capped. Forever. Careful of these little books. Okay. I take a portal and then I go back to my waypoint right here and then that way you can come to the other side level up your gems okay Dodre important do not use your curse on Dodre if you use your curse she will eat it gain unholy might which is bonus chaos actually they changed it so I don't know how new unholy might works but example I curse her look at her head see her head right there She's going to eat it. 
Now she's purple and she does giga damage. So I personally like to stay in the enfeeble area or the um, the temporal chains area. But to be honest, I don't read and I don't even listen to my own advice because I just cursed her. And I just do the little circle trick. You just run in a circle. I do think in hindsight, if your regeneration is really good like mine, it is better to drop vitality and run determination than going to acrimony like I have done. But again, I'm not struggling, so it's okay for me. This is mainly because this next act has an incredible spike in damage, and I like having determination before then. But again, we're totally fine, so it's not a problem. To get determination, instead of doing this little stretch, you just go one, two, three. Drop vitality, run determination. Okay, don't ever stand in that beam and don't get hit by that slam. That's all you need to know for Malachi. There are traps on the floor that explode, but just pay attention to that slam right there. You have to be a little careful because he can target your golem, and if he slams your golem and you're next to it, it's going to hit you. Just like that right there. So you can see the traps here. They don't really do anything. Okay. You can drop a portal here if you're concerned. Go into the next phase. So in this phase, all you have to do is basically damage Malachi, break a heart, damage Malachi, break a heart, and then etc. That's the whole phase. This is an attack you can tank, but you shouldn't, so just go around him when he does a little squiggly attack. Now he's going to go over here, so we just want to kill this. Go back to Malachi. Malachi will also go underground. When he goes underground, you have to be careful because he's going to pop back up and slam you, and that will probably kill you. There's also some weird damage over time, but... I never really know when it's happening because RF. You're taking burning damage from creeping agony. Okay, so this thing actually hurts you, but RF. Okay, he never did a slam. And there's a full plate. We can actually use this because we're only using a singular red socket here. So this will probably just be better. It's actually horrible. We're going to continue using this instead. <laughs> Do you hear me, Kitama? Your slaves are dead. Okay. Your king. Remember to take that passive if you never did from Tasuni before we did lab. I don't remember if I did, so I'm going to go double check. Okay, yeah, I got it. Now you get an interesting choice here with your gems. If you're running the same links as me, you're going to grab a increased area of effect right here. You can choose to drop efficacy on your Righteous Fire with increased area of effect. If you are dropping it, you want to make sure that you are leveling it still because you are definitely going to use it later. By using NKOE, your RF circle gets bigger. Let's see, I can show you in a second here. So here's an example. This is where mobs are going to hit pretty hard, just FYI. Especially these, like, Flicker Strike dudes, they hit really hard. I'm just going to... I have an Acceleration Shrine, so I'm just going to skip this whole zone. There's some recipes here and there, but uh, I don't remember what they do. Am I supposed to be going this way? Or is it literally right up there? I think it's actually right up there still. Oh, that doesn't matter. Oh, 
Yeah, I was up here. Okay, in we go. I am just going to finish up Acrimony, get the less damage taken over time, and then grab Sovereignty. That's the order I like to go in. Orb of Binding. Very, very cool item. Binding will guarantee that it four links a piece of gear and alks it. So if you haven't found any four links and you find a binding, you can use that to make yourself a four link. From this point onward, we don't really, we don't really like uh, get any more support gems. So you pretty much are just blasting from this point onward. The only gear I'm really gonna upgrade are most likely my accessories. There's a rare chance I'll upgrade my other gear. Like for example, boots I might pick up in binding, but if it works, it works. The campaign gear is not even really that good. So if I can just blitz the campaign with the gear I have, I do. And then when I'm in maps, I upgrade later. Because maps are just going to have better base types for you. Example, more armor, more evasion, better affixes, etc. New life flask. It's around this time as well where we want to start getting more life because our life is pretty low. But again, I wanted to, to greed more for damage and not having survivability issues. So before anything, I think I'll just try to get the termination going before I get more uh, more life. So it's basically going to go acrimony, mastery, uh, fit in determination, and then scale life. I guess it's also worth picking up scepters now, since we don't care as much for the flat damage. It would be better to get a scepter with like fire multi over what I'm currently using. Actually, we need to go... Is it the other side? I need to go the other side first, I think, for the item. Now, for people who don't like Fire Trap, there is unfortunately no replacement. There are. They are all inferior in many ways. For example, people who like Scorching Ray, standing still is not really viable in PoE. It's viable in low-tier content and then... It's not really viable anymore. That's kind of just the nature of it. You can find other variations on my website that I showed at the beginning of the video or under the RF command if you're on Twitch. See you later. Okay, this is a big damage node. Let's get some numbers here. 4,360 goes to what, 4.8K? 4 4,800 on the dot. Okay, we are coming up to one of the, I'd say, rippiest campaign bosses. Our life is definitely low for the fight, but we're 100% res cap, so that definitely helps a lot.
We also get a very big damage spike on our next Ascendancy. Okay, my inventory is pretty full. I'm going to go back and just vendor some of this stuff. Also, get a skill point and a ring. Remember, you want to take the ruby ring here. Thank you. By killing 50 life. You've given us a fighting 50 life and suffix open. So, uh, right now, you have a choice between granite flask and ruby flask. Ruby gives you more regeneration. Granite gives you more armor. Because Ruby Flask is changing and I want to simulate a better experience, I will take the Granite Flask. Remember, we Ruby Flask in the patch will give five max res. It's a lot better early game and then falls off later for our build. Why did I come back to my hideout? I'm gonna do something, but I forgot. Not sure. I'm just gonna go ahead and drop the MP Flask for the Granite. And let's go back to where we were. I thought I was going to do... What was I going to do? Not sure. I'm going to take the less damage taken from over time. This makes us take less damage from our own Righteous Fire. Oh, Ring Craft. Thank you. Yes, that's what I was going to do. Yes, yes, yes. We're going to go ahead and just directly replace this ring. We're going to put Fire Res on this ring. Not going to use my Alchemy Orb. Although that's a pretty good ring, so I don't think it's a bad... I'm clicking the Alchemy Orb. Okay, so now we have 50 life with 23 fire res. It's an easy replacement off that current one. So now we're going to go ahead and go back. Okay, uh, let's go. What is up with this strong box? Holy, it's like a raid boss. Okay, okay. Can you hear that little noise? I don't know if you heard it. There are like these little chaos balls that fall down and they will kill you. No builds really have good chaos res at this point unless you're, I guess, a cultist maybe? I don't even know. They might need their two points for it. Um, so I typically just avoid those as much as you can. Okay. Now I'm going to go into my aura scaling. And the reason I'm not taking the reservation this way is we don't need that much reservation to run two 50% auras. In fact, we literally just need one reservation node. So it just saves you an extra point on the tree for right now, and then later on we switch it. I cannot do this yet. A lot of people also might be wondering why I'm not running Purity of Fire and I'm running Purity of Elements. Remember that Purity of Fire will give us maybe one to two max fire res at this point. Uh, and it will give us more, I don't know if it really does give us more res, it gives us more regeneration, but Purity of Elements is giving us immunity to basically freeze uh, and shock, which are the two main offenders for people dying, getting frozen in place and taking more damage from everything. There's also an argument to be made where when you are shocked, you take more damage from your own Righteous Fire, making you actually have less net regeneration. So I really like running Purity of Elements, until Uber Lab on this build, or until you acquire Shock or a Freeze Immunity. Shock can be dealt with with other affixes, but Freeze, I never want to be frozen personally. So for the remainder of the campaign, you will be on Purity of Elements. This place is crazy for density. This is a good place to catch up on if you feel like you're weaker right now than the content you're doing. There is so many monsters in this zone. It is crazy. And at the end of the zone, 
there is guaranteed that there's, I believe, three blue packs. So that's right here. Pack one, pack two. Actually, this is already pack three. There's four packs here. You can see I just leveled and the XP is just spiking up. Also, new shield. It's got to be better than this. There is no way that this shield is worse than this shield. So we're going to we're going to take a look at that in just a minute. Okay, let's see. Rock breaker, white socket. Unfortunately, in the new patch, there's no more white socket gear dropping from mobs. I was going to say if you somehow manage to find some but they don't exist anymore, white socket gear is great for leveling random gems in your offhand. All right, let's idea it. It's I mean, it's better, but it's not really much better. <laughs> it's, it's pretty bad. I mean, reduced damage taken from crits is at least pretty good, but other than that, it's got nothing else going for it. We're just going to go craft life on that shield. It's a little bit better. It is better. Just, you know, I was expecting a little bit better. This actually has 32 burning damage, but has no prefix open for fire. Excellent. Just gonna vendor it. Could have been okay. Movement speed, but we're stuck on these boots right now because of links. Unfortunate. We're gonna go ahead and just put this right here into the pile of stuff I say I might use in the future, but I'm totally just gonna delete it after this. Oh, actually, let's not go here. We wanna go back to the overseer's tower. So we can go ahead and use our waypoint here. Or not waypoint, but portal. Okay. Next up we get sovereignty. The world must be cleansed of impurity. Alright, this guy, you just pretty much want to dodge that. Other than that, he doesn't really do anything. You can dodge the little frontal sweep. I am the Emperor. Then he has add phase. Shouldn't really be a problem. You can use blood rage here to get frenzy charges. around so if you have an open red socket like i do you can also grab infernal cry infernal cry is a war cry that will debuff enemies causing them to take extra fire damage and also it explodes the pack of mobs for later now this guy actually does some damage so there's a beam here you don't really want to tank that if you have a ruby flask you might be able to tank it but you just circle strafe him You'll notice actually what I do here. I actually animation cancel part of my fire trap. Okay, um, so I was kind of being stupid there. Um, you're not supposed to tank that. I was actually showing I was showing an example of animation canceling my fire trap, and I one shot myself. Um, don't do that. What I was gonna what I was gonna show is uh, if you throw your fire trap, you can cancel the end animation by frost blinking. Unfortunately, I did it at the worst time and literally frost blinked into the boss attack. So don't do that. Don't do that at all. <laughs> at all. But it was just an example to show. Hey, look, a recipe. And that, that brings me to state the following. Don't forget to pick up the recipe here that can help you out. Let's just go zoom through. No problem. Mistakes happen. That's crazy. I literally never die in the campaign. Ever. 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 It's huge. Oh, 
Okay, in we go. Okay. Uh, let's talk to what's his name who pops up. Actually, it doesn't really matter. We just go this way and then we just go here and talk to Bannon. Good. Getting old sucks. No, it was just a. This wasn't paying attention when I was showing an example. I mean, it's good, though. I think it makes it relatable when you make mistakes. When people just see other people play games and everything is perfect, it can look a bit boring sometimes when there's no danger, right? Showing that you can die, especially in the campaign to certain mechanics, I think is not necessarily a bad thing. Well, so, like, the thing on the animation canceling is the only time I really will go for an animation cancel is when there's a big pack of mobs and I'm throwing a fire trap and I want to avoid the damage. Like, you see this pack, like this mob here? I would like go like this and then frost blink to the side. That way I'm not just standing still getting blasted by all the mobs in front of me. Okay. I always forget the questing order here, I'll be honest. Um, <laughs> it's about right here in the campaign where I forget everything for some reason. I don't know why. I have, like, the early acts memorized, and then the later acts are just... They're just all kind of a blur for me. Quartz Flask is cool. Gives you phasing. Allows you to go through the monsters. Very nice for this build. Okay, so is Ossuary a skill point or is it lab? No, it's mandatory regardless, right? Yeah, sign of purity. Okay, so you need this before you fight Katava. And then do I get a skill point down here or no? Also, it's time for determination. So we're going to go back to town. We're going to go ahead and go back to Act 3. Now, I like taking the Crimson Jewel because I think it has the best chance of rolling life. So, let's go over here. We're going to grab Determination. We're going to replace Vitality with Determination. And now we're going to turn on the term, and that gives us a ton of armor. Okay, good. And now it's time to get some life nodes so we don't get one shot. Reliquary is a skill point. Cool, thanks. Life regen check, 512. So now we have elemental resistance covered and physical resistance covered, which is pretty cool. Not bad. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe. I cannot do this yet. me out there we go okay now we're gonna go grab a bonus skill point that's located down over here is it Petula who doesn't really do anything but the zone is the skill point is it right is that how it works
Okay, here's a Tula. It's cool, my RF Inquisitor uses this guy's body armor. Not that it actually drops off him, but, yeah. Should that be cool? Do you, wonder if he has bias to dropping it. No way. No way, it's too high level of a body armor. Okay, and then in here, we got a skill point. Gotta find the three little things. Careful of that. That lightning thing is very crazy. On a side note, while I'm here, I can go ahead and show off to you guys some Righteous Fire microtransactions that I have. So, we're going to go ahead and start off with my personal favorite, which is Harbinger Righteous Fire. I don't know why, I just really enjoy this one. It's by far my favorite. And throughout the campaign, we will switch to different colors for you guys. Okay, now we got one more of these things to find. We really want to get a new belt. Our belt literally has no life on it. We're lacking a lot of life from the belt. It's definitely something we want to acquire. that um hey is it time for a new shield maybe i mean yeah okay sure at least i can craft armor on this one it's all right let's let's go for that so we want to chroma and get one green okay now we're going to use our armor scraps we have some in our stash? No. Let's go to our hideout. We're gonna go ahead and put armor. So you can do math here on what's better, percent armor or flat armor. Um, just looking at it, it has 300 base. You can also put hybrid with, I don't know if you unlock hybrid with life. I don't think so. No, not yet, we don't. So we'll just do, uh... oh, okay, I can't, I have to do percent armor. It doesn't even matter. So I'll just do this one here for an alchemy orb. Okay, now we have a decent armor shield. I'll take it. Replace this one here. Should be a nice armor chunk. Very nice. Okay. Now we're gonna grab some life. So I'm gonna grab 50 base life. Okay, now before I go back, I have an alchemy orb. If she sells a leather belt, that's rare. I was gonna buy, or sorry, that's white. I was gonna buy it in Alka. Remember. So we'll pick up a leather belt off the floor and Alka. Let's go ahead and go over to Katava. Now Katava is definitely a rippy boss. We just got some armor upgrades, so it's definitely less rippy, but Katava is most definitely a rippy boss. If your body armor has no life roll, actually I could put um, put armor on the body armor. If your body armor has no life roll and no life regen roll, you can actually allocate an awesome mastery that gives you bonus life if you do not have a life modifier on your body armor. I'd probably advise doing this in the campaign because you're kind of constantly swapping gear. So that's probably, it's a really strong node, but I kind of would just hold off on it. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and get ready for Katava. Really like to find leather. 
Cool, a leather belt. Now, what you want to do if you want to make the most out of your alchemy orb, you can go ahead and wait until you get like a really high implicit roll. I don't care too much. I just want to replace this belt. This belt really just has armor, but now that we have good armor, I'd much prefer life. So what would be a preferred outcome here? 62 life. That's too high. 49 life with 27 fire res with a 100 armor roll. Yeah, that sounds good. That sounds great to me. Okay, we hit 35 life. Um, suffix open for fire res. Prefix open for armor. I don't know if we can craft armor yet. So this is still a, it's better than this. For sure it's better. Life is very big here. You can see our HP is going to put us to 1400. Just shy of 1400. Okay, let's take a look-see at our passives here. If you want more damage, which is that really even a question? Let's get more damage. We go into Spiritual Aid. So Spiritual Aid makes it so minion damage affects us. More specifically, increased minion damage. Not minion support gems, not minion area of effect, not minion life, only minion damage. This is actually very efficient when you tally the points here and then also later on retribution that we take. Also, you gain 1% life regen on Righteous Army. So this is what I like to go for now. Alternatively, you can go for extra life scaling, but I'm going to go for damage first because I'm confident in my survivability. Kind of like how I was confident that I wasn't going to get one shot and then I got one shot. It kind of, kind of goes like that. Unfortunately, the nodes leading to spiritual aid don't give any damage until we acquire all of it. So now we're going to go ahead and put a portal scroll here. And we're at Kitava. So the hand swipe, you can just charge over. Don't shield charge because you might die going through it. Hand swipe again. We're just going to go over. This is a great time to use a guard skill like Molten Shell or Steel Skin. If you see the incoming attack and you have time, you can activate a guard skill since they are instant cast. I'm just passing on them because I don't really, I don't know, I'm lazy, I guess. I try to stay away from the Giga Socket pressure. So this explosion pulses three times. After the third pulse, you want to Frost Blink out. Not Shield Charge, but Frost Blink. There's the hand swipe. We're just moving out of the way. I like staying in the front here because we don't get hit by the shockwave in the back. Over here is the Katava Heart. Got to be careful. The adds do heavy physical. I try to just prioritize the heart and again, do that little circle thing where I rotate and the mobs kind of just die from the degens. So again, getting ready to look at Katava here. Uh, this is a degen. We just move out of it and we're fine. That's the explosion. Third pulse, frost blink out, charge away from that. Okay, go to the other side. Okay, back to the heart. Granite flask on and just circle strafe. One, two, three, out. That's it. That's the Katava fight. Katava lowers your res. We're chieftain. Nothing happens to us. We lose like 30 life regen. That's about it. Okay, if you made it this far, you've done a great job. Go stretch, you know, go hydrate, go grab some more coffee, take a breather. Right? Not a problem. We are going to move onward. So, let's go ahead and vendor some of this. These are actually nice gloves. See you later. This is a side quest over here to the left. We don't have to do this, um, but this unlocks a vendor called Lily, who you can buy every single support gem, aside from, like, Empower, Enhance, Enlighten, uh, for... Well, just basically from her. It's basically super quality of life for later when you want to go ahead and pick up extra gems. Exile. You are a welcome omen. 
The only downside, you have to kill everything. Now another nice thing about Chieftain, I'm sure you guys have watched some YouTube content, uh, at least potentially on some Chieftain builds, if not that's okay, but for people who have, you'll notice that Chieftain has explosions. Now I don't personally take the explosions until the end of the campaign, and the primary reason is there's not a lot of monster density in the campaign, and the mobs aren't that tanky, so I prefer to get the core functions of the build down before taking explode. So that way, right when you enter maps, you already have your explode. I cannot do this yet. Okay, talk to Lily, we're done. Let's go ahead and grab our spiritual aid. Stay sharp out there. So if we talk to Lily, she'll give us a book here for some passive respec, and then this unlocks the Lily shop. So now if you look, we can purchase any gem we want. While we're here, we'll just grab that Infernal Cry I was talking about. Put it right over there. Now, Infernal Cry has this thing where you exert. You don't have to worry about the exert at all. All you need to know about Infernal Cry, you press the button, mobs get covered in ash, they take bonus fire, and they explode. So an example of the explode... See how they popped? Maybe I'll have to get a bigger pack here. Sunplate. Okay, we, we got some nice armor on that. We have any... We're going to save up, uh, get some armor scraps before we uh, alk this one. The exerts are gone in 3.24. Oh, really? These mobs also do incredibly high damage. I'm gonna be a little careful. Again, I am primarily ignoring gear right now, just for the sake of going through the campaign. Um, my boots, for example, are still basically white boots with just crafted movement speed. Having armor there would really help with the survivability. So if we find a, a good base, I could potentially alchem, but I'm happy with what we have. It's fine. Okay, now that we have that off of the mob, we're going to go ahead and go to our next boss. So over here to the left is where the exit is. So we're just going to kind of shield charge there. I think it's actually on the northern side. Oh, is it? Maybe not. Maybe, yeah? Oh, it's right here. Perfect. I mean, I accidentally vendored the unethical shield. It was actually an accident. Does that count? Okay, so for this guy, be careful of the little totem. I just like to kite around here. That thing kind of, you can see it's cutting my regeneration because of the dot. When he has this bubble, he's immune. You got to kill these totems. So we just kind of fly around here. Be careful of the little ground stuff as well. So here's another one. Okay. All right. Tukohama. You could interact with them and get the Pantheon now. I'm kind of lazy, so I'm just going to skip it. Um, Tukahama doesn't give us too much for the Pantheon. I would just interact with him, though, and just take the Pantheon Blessing. The main thing we're looking for is Brine King. Brine King will be the 
uh, act boss of this act. The boss of this act. There we go. Oh, poor golem. Yeah, let's get the golem back up. Now, in this area, there is a super spooky mini boss here. He's a little wheel like this, but he's uh, unique named. If his bleed hits you and you run, you will probably die. Uh, that is one thing to take note of. Okay, this brings me to the next one. Do you see this monster here? Prevents life recovery above 50%. This is what we call an executioner monster, and if you're in the, the field, your life will basically be set to 50%. The best way to kill them is to literally go face and kill them, or just jump out of the ring every so often and chuck some fire traps. Seventy-seven life, with prefix open for armor. I like this body armor. Let's use it. Who wins? gonna vendor this other one it's fine though it's probably better we'll save it back to prison okay uh in prison there is also a uh, labyrinth trial that you're gonna want to complete for our next lab where we get a lot of damage I'm going to put that point into Righteous Army. That's another 1% life regen. Life regen check. We're sitting at 487. I cannot do this yet. 459. Oh, okay. That's because I'm cursed with flammability, though. That's cheating. There we go. Life regen is not feeling amazing right now. Our golem is dead, though. With golem up, it's 547. So the golem does help a lot at this stage in the game. Later on, we don't need him. Remember, if you're in Trade League or you're okay with buying items for literally like one chaos... You can look into items such as Kikizuru Ring. One Kikizuru Ring will fix all of your sustain. Higher Ring will give you incredible amounts of damage. You can also look into a belt called Immortal Flesh that will skyrocket your life regeneration. Uh, I think Rise of the Phoenix comes a bit later, so we're not going to go into that right now. But those few items I just talked about are one chaos most likely. Maybe Pyre is more expensive, but it's not for the sustain, it's for the damage. All right, into Chavron's Tower. Remember, if you miss the lab trial, it is in that previous one that we just finished, the instance. Um, that doesn't normally happen. We're going to leave that on the floor there. That's a bit unethical, okay? We're, we're going to just... We're gonna that that never happened, okay? Don't don't worry about that. Shh, don't, don't worry about that. No 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 no. See, it's important that the next league is starting soon. So because the next league is starting soon, we can't waste our RNG now. We need to leave it on the floor so we can continue to get our good luck for the next league. Turquoise amulet. Okay, maybe we get a better one. 45 life dexterity cold res. 
I like it. You know why? Because we don't need int anymore. We need the dex. So I'll just put that there. And we actually want to craft... Oh, we can't craft fire, though. Can't craft fire res. That's okay, though. It's still better. If your loot filter ever goes off like that, you should pick up that item. It's worth a lot of currency. Not always, but the ting is the reason a lot of people play PoE. Okay, so for this fight, this guy hits crazy hard. And then Chavron's also attacking you. We do this thing where I like to go in a circle. Be careful because he'll also hook and that does a lot of damage. Then we get Shav over here. She will spam these little books and eventually she's going to go up in the sky. Um, when she goes up in the sky, you don't want to be underneath her because she will slam. So I just run away, wait for her to land. Okay, then we go back on her. Now, right when this fight starts, he likes to hook, so don't be in front of him. Pay att like that, right there. Don't do that. So pay attention to that. Then he does the triple slam, just like Brutus, because he is Brutus. See you later. So at this point, let's take a look at the Pantheon powers we have. And so, and so it begins. Uh, we currently have Tukahama. Tukahama doesn't really do much because we're not really stationary for very long, and that's really about it. Okay. Over here, we have a guy called Aberath. He is like a fire goat. He hits really hard. Um, we don't want to, uh, we don't really want to tank him. If you find Western Forest, we're not going to Western Forest. I cannot do this yet. Western Forest is where we want to go after we kill the Firebender. I mean, Goat, sorry. Okay, here he is. Now, this guy's a little tricky. He has a jump. He has that, you just move out of the way. That's a fireball. He has this thing where he stomps on the ground and he gets angry. And then he has he summons a bunch of fireballs. So that's his stomp when he's angry. He has super damage reduction and does fire damage as he walks. All you gotta do is get him to 50% life and then we go into the next phase. When you're in here, skip all the loot. You can go and throw fire traps if you want some XP. Actually pretty nice XP. But there is fire that's following right behind you. So you don't really wanna you don't really wanna be in that. Okay, then we get into here. He immediately shoots a fireball in your face. When he does that, you gotta be careful because fire comes from this side. Actually, I guess that was his summon his ad. Usually, usually there's a bunch of fire that rains down. All right, well, see you later, friend. That is one skill point. But before we redeem our point, we're just gonna go ahead and move over to the western forest area over here. Okay, very nice. From here, I'm going to go ahead and portal back. We're going to go ahead and put that point into minion damage. We're going to grab our skill point. We're going to grab our other skill point. Good work. There is also a reward here for a helmet. Um... I'm not really going to... I'm just going to take this one. I don't really think I'm going to use it. Uh, it doesn't really matter to me. This is actually okay. It gives physical damage reduction and life regen. This is actually pretty nice. Yeah, this is actually pretty nice. But am I going to use it? Probably not. Okay. Um, now we get spiritual aid, which is going to be a ton of damage. So, easy way to tell on how much damage we get. We're going to go ahead and just stand right here. Look at our Righteous Fire damage. It's currently 6.8k. We're going to allocate Spiritual Aid. It's now 8.4k. Very nice. Now, I want life. It's time for some HP. So, two ways you can do this. A, if you don't want HP and you want damage and area of effect, that would be Explosive Impact for four points. Since we're coming across a Chaos boss, I'm going to grab Purity of Flesh uh, for two points. As for our fire trap, it's currently sitting at 7 point, sorry, 8.5k, I guess, with frenzy charges. I guess that means RF is 9.8k with frenzy charges.
Okay, crumbled road is... Actually, the crumbled road doesn't matter here. Never mind. We just follow this all the way through. No, it's, it's this one here where you get the, um, the, uh, stuff. Oh, you're saying attributes to craft. Oh, sorry, I thought you meant skill point. I, I don't think I've ever went to the crumbled road there, to be honest. And we're primarily skipping the white mobs and aiming for rares and or blue packs. So from the waypoint here, you want to go this way. If you are concerned, this boss does a lot of damage, much more than the other ones. You can skip for now if you're an HC. Come back when it's a little later. This boss does chaos damage. Not a lot of campaign bosses do chaos damage because people don't usually have chaos res by this stage. Maybe a new weapon? Nope. Just by the way, we are still using the item level 20 weapon we found in Act 2. Okay, that one's dead. That one's dead. That one's dead. Here's the boss. Pay attention to the boss. It does like a whole bunch of random chaos stuff. Try to I try to just constantly be on the opposite side. So when it looks at me, I go away. That little tunnel part hurts. So here I'm just going to frost blink away. Here I'm going to move out of the way again to the other side. All right. That's a skill point. Let's port back. Stay sharp out there. Okay. I'm going to just put that over there. And now we're going to Brian King. A few things to do first, but pretty much aiming for Brian King. Level check, I'm 49, zone is 48, and we're close to leveling. Totally fine on XP, so we're just gonna skip. As a rule of thumb, let's check attributes again. Fire Trap is not gated by decks, so we are okay. The only reason my gems are like this is because there's gem mobs in the game right now that don't exist. Have no fear though, it doesn't really change anything because I can't level the gems above where they're supposed to. Like where they're supposed to be because of level requirement. I cannot do this yet. Let's see anything here? No. Okay. Let's keep going. Uh where are we going here? I feel like I'm supposed to go north, so I'm going to go north. Okay. My tummy is rumbling. I can't wait. Grab this little flag, and now we're just gonna skip. Okay, seventeen seventy four HP. Um I think that I'm okay with this amount. Let's get some more damage and AoE. And then after this, we're going to get more HP probably. Let's 
definitely on the lower side of HP, but again, comparing to Inquisitor and Juggernaut, Chieftain has the least amount of sustain at this stage. So that's why I'm not focusing too much on HP, because if I pump too much HP, we're going to start lacking regeneration, and that's not a good feeling. The alternative is just stacking more HP and running Arrogant's Vitality. This is also a good option, but adds two more uh, sockets to the like the build, which it can just be a little bit too much for some people. That's why I like showing with the bare minimum you can use to get by. All right, here you got a escort. I don't even know, is this really considered like an escort mission? I'm not really sure. You just have to like protect this thing. Actually, it's invulnerable. You just have to sit in the circle basically. So I just throw a bunch of fire traps in the circle here. And you gotta do this for both sides. You can see my regen is not where I'd like it to be because I can barely sustain the fire traps. But again, it's still more than enough and it's because we're running Blood Rage as well. We'll get more regeneration in a little bit. You have a Ruby Flask. Ruby Flasks also give you regen, which is nice. Okay, come over here, swing across. Now I do the same thing on the other side. Okay. Wait, have I been using momentum instead of faster attacks this whole time? It's actually kind of funny. I meant to be using faster attacks. Whoops. Totally didn't misclick that. I guess at this stage, it doesn't really matter. Oh, no, it actually does. Might go back to Act 1 just to get a higher level faster attacks. I can do that. Not Lily, because Lily gives it to you at level 1. But um, getting it from here will get it kind of close to your level. So you can see here, this one is giving me 33 attack speed. Goodbye. Would be wrong to do that here. Okay. Now we get to go fight the next boss, Ryan King. Also, there are these little rock golems here. These rock golems, if they slam you, you will get sent right to Lumbridge. So don't get hit by them unless you want a one-way trip to Lumbee. They look actually just like your rock golem, like that guy. Especially if they're rare. If they're rare and they do their kaboom slam, see you later. Some monsters are just incredibly strong for their level. I'll be that guy right there. Should we let him slam us? Slam me. Okay, he didn't do it. The next rare, rare, like rare golem guy I come across, I will I'll let them slam us for content. Let's see what happens. The bubbles? Did the bubbles hurt you guys? These right here? These? These things? Okay, they kind of hurt when you take like 42 of them, but if it's just like 10, it's fine. Okay, there's a rare one. Um, Everything is going to be totally fine, right? Let me just... Uh, He's just a soul eater, right? Okay, he doesn't... Okay, so that one was fine. He he didn't have extra damage. If he has extra damage, then you're then you're gone. Okay, well, I already tanked one, so we're not tanking another. No problem. Ooh, a rare ruby. This could be an upgrade. Uh, is that fire as suffix? It does. Okay. Okay, that could replace this one. We get a little bit of regen. That's about it. 
so strong. Okay. So dedicated. Brian King. So, drop a portal here if you want to be safe. Ideally in the middle of the arena. Don't you see? Brian King is pretty easy. It's mainly the phases that are a little difficult with Brian King. We are both so touched by your generosity. I accidentally just poured liquid on my keyboard and um, it's all literally on my WASD buttons. Um, okay, this is... Um, I don't have a napkin near me. Um, how, do I, how do I fix this? Do I have like a sock? So during this phase here, there are like these little storm calls. You don't really want to get hit by the storm calls. They do a lot of damage. There's also water that shoots out of the like surrounding area. So you got to be a little careful of that. Brian King will also do this thing where he gets like a bubble and he gets super defensive. Um, you can kite it out or if you're strong enough to tank it, you can just try tanking it. You can also, you could walk in here, but you take a lot of damage. So be careful of that. Rip keyboard? Yeah, probably. Okay, though. This keyboard's really old. It's fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be okay. So we always say, right? Okay, Brian King is down. This is very big. This prevents you from getting stunlocked. Very strong. So we're going to go ahead and allocate that now. Boom. Over here, we have less duration of ignite. We're immune to ignite. This is life flasks, and this is physical damage reduction while standing still. Doesn't really matter either way. We're also going to get to ascend here very soon, so I am very excited. So now we are going back. This is basically like Act 3 all over again. Now we're just going to zoom through. Kill any blue packs we find. They're yummy. Essence, I don't care as much for anymore. I'm going to right-click the Frost Blink so we don't have to worry about leveling it anymore. Doesn't really matter too much on it anyway. All right, so from here, we're going to get to the waypoint, and then you hit a crossroads. You want to go south. So here is our crossroads. We're going to go south. The reason we're going south is we need a quest item before we can go north, and also this is where one of the other labyrinth trials are. Actually aiming to go right for that that we see on the map so this is perfect remember that you do have a labyrinth trial to complete here for your next ascendancy okay actually this one here no I do not want sticky key. how did sticky keys even try to enable one day I'll permanently disable that thing from popping up Because of the water? Oh no, it's the water. The what? No, sticky key. Oh no. Oh my, it keeps spamming. It keeps popping up like crazy. Uh, okay, well, it's just hard mode, no problem. We just get constant sticky keys that pops up. On the off chance that sticky keys enables, how do I disable it, by the way? Just hit the option to disable it. Wait, are you telling me every time it pops up, I never hit the checkbox and I just always just hit okay? Will the checkbox permanently disable sticky keys? If it's Windows, you gotta disable it in there. Ooh, that's kind of yikes. There's a Windows option, never see the prompt. Hmm. That's okay. It's just hard mode. No problem. Has that always shown on the map? I don't remember that.
I was like, why are sticky keys popping up? I'm not pressing shift that much. In fact, I'm not pressing shift at all. All right, this is Delirium. I'm just going to end it because we're not trying to make the campaign more difficult right now. All right. Over here, we want to make sure we hit this waypoint. Come over to the map device and use this little thing here. Where are you, friend? I guess it's over here to the right. You guys have a shield charge, and during the duration of your shield charge, you get the sticky keys pop up two times? So this guy, you hurt him, and then he splits. Well, he doesn't split, but he has an ad phase. You just pretty much want to move out of the direction of where he casts those little balls, because they kind of, like, hit you a bunch of times. See that right there? You just move. Okay. He also does a slam that I just tanked there. Then he does this phase. You can kind of just move around here or pop your life flask. There's a little shot again. Okay. That pole axis for attack builds. We're not going to worry about that. Portal out. Talk to Silk. Get the keys. And remember to see the waypoint? Follow the same direction as the waypoint to go to the next zone. Okay. This is huge. We get big damage very soon. We're also going to need red, red links. So we got a lot of reds. Not a problem for us. This is because we are going to be dropping flammability. And at this point, well, not dropping, we're more like switching flammability. This is also when if you have combustion in your fire trap, which is better than swift affliction, you replace combustion for control destruction, or you get an extra green and you go swift affliction like I have now. So that little icon right there, that's going to be our labyrinth. You do that, and we're ready to ascend. We actually go RF much earlier now than usual, or not usual, but since the Fire Mastery change, every RF build goes RF in Act 2. I think that's like maybe level 21, somewhere right around there. Okay. Hit the waypoint. We're going to go ascend. Let's go. Ascend with precision. Now, we got to be careful. The labyrinth is three levels higher than us, so it is advantageous to keep clearing the act until we get caught up with the zone level. I'm a little bit overconfident, kind of like how I was overconfident on Innocence and got one shot. Surely I won't die in labyrinth. That hasn't happened also in a very long time. So this is going here. We're going to go ahead and check north. Okay. No, Sticky Keys, stop. Dodge the slam. 
Dodge the other slam. Dodge that. Stand your ground. Out of the way. Dodge again. All right, we're good. Only one of your lessons was completed, Ascendant. Frostblink and Flame Dash is a personal preference. I prefer Frostblink because it is instant cast, and Flame Dash has a cast time. There is a special scenario where movement skills are instant cast for the first application. This is actually still not comparable to Frostblink being instant. For certain content, like Ubers, it's advantageous to use Flame Dash over Frostblink primarily because you have multiple charges. You can also link Frostblink with Flammability, um, which I used to do, but they nerfed it and made the Hex Touch support gem have a big penalty on damage. So you can do it if you want, just comes with a single target damage loss. Um, okay. Um, um, we got a problem. Um, my uh, keyboard is, um, 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 oh boy, the, the liquid is, um, the, the liquid's not happy. Um, um, can you stop? Stop? Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna, stop, I don't want the Kirak Vault Pass. GG! I don't want to buy the Vault Pass! Okay, okay. Um, we're gonna have to take, we're gonna have to take a, a minute here to, to to fix it. Okay, let me just um, let me just uh, I, I got I got a, um, um, how how are we gonna how are we gonna do this? Let's see. Um, I like a tissue or uh, I, I don't really know. Um, do I have like a can of air I could like spray to get this out or give me just one minute? Uh, I'll be honest, I'm not really sure what I have. Okay, I got a can of air. Why is it missing the top? What is this? I have a can of air, but it's like literally missing the like little part where you like, you know, um, um, oh boy. Why is it every time I try to make these videos, something goes wrong? Okay, I'm going to just turn my keyboard upside down. Everything's going to be okay. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna just make this work, okay? Oh my god, S sticky keys stop! <sighs> stop it! It keeps popping up. Okay, okay. I think I just accidentally turned sticky keys on. So what do sticky keys do, by the way? Oh, nope, nope, it's not turned on because it keeps spamming. Disable them? <laughs> it keeps pressing Z. I couldn't even see the zone at first. No, stop it. Stop it. You know, I, here I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this on just so you guys can see what I'm dealing with, okay? When one defiles the effigy, one defiles the emperor. You guys can watch this fight on what I've had to deal with for the past 45 minutes. Accept no impasse. Oh wow, it's being so nice right now. Click no. <laughs> this clip. I've never actually read it. Disable this keyboard shortcut. Disable! Wait. Stop! Leave me alone! Sticky keys. Off. Allow the shortcut. No. Bad. No sticky keys. No. Uncheck. Wait. What? I, I, I 
can't. I, 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 I can't. It's, it's, it's not letting me click it. Okay, I think I, I think I got it. I think I got it. I think I got it. Now, as long as our character doesn't randomly weapon swap again or start shoving the Kirak Vault Pass in my face, everything will be golden. I am not moving my fingers. I am not touching anything. I am glued to it for the remainder of this run. Hi, I'm Chris Wilson from Grinding Gear Games. Don't forget to buy your MTX, boys. Or you may have to face the Sticky Keys God. Or just use a sippy cup. The man's not wrong. A sippy cup, a sippy cup would have fixed this problem. Simple rule: don't drink in tight. I I wanted to merge my two glasses of water, and somehow I missed the cup and just poured it on my keyboard. Look, I don't want to talk about it. This is a righteous fire run. We're going to be talking about Righteous Fire today. Okay, let's see here. Everything's good. Everything's going just fine. Okay, that almost killed me. Blood Scepter? Yes, you can carry it. Pick it up. Pick it up now. Pick up that one and that one. Okay. All right. Click this. Click this. Grab this Ascendancy. All right, good. We don't even have to click anything as long as we tag that. We're good. Come over here. Add 3 million XP to a gem. We're just going to put quality on Righteous Fire here. Where's our Righteous Fire at, by the way? Boom. Okay. Um. Why does... I can't ID because my shift is broken. Ha Stop weapon swapping me. Okay, we don't need weapon up. We don't need upgrades. It's okay. It's not a problem. We'll just finish it like this. Everything is totally fine. Not a problem. Everything is okay. We don't need new weapon. Okay. 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 Can I? Okay. We. It's all right. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. We no problem. All right. So from here, we're going to go ahead and see if we have any skill points. I don't think we have any skill points, so we're just going to go ahead and continue the run. Everything is fine. We're going to grab explosive impacts. Now, honestly, you remember how I said I'm grabbing purity of flesh? This was honestly a mistake. I shouldn't have grabbed purity of flesh. I think it would have been better to grab part of the warrior because it gives you more overall HP, which just protects you against more sources. So in hindsight, I would grab that. Also, for your Ascendancy, since we just ascended, now we're getting the big damage spike from Chieftain. So we're going to grab this beautiful node called Ramako's Sunlight. Now, Ramako's Sunlight states that nearby enemies have minus 20 fire res when you're stationary. What's unique about this is when you are shield charging, you are actually somewhat tagged as stationary. Okay, we can't use that bell. I don't know why I thought I could. Uh, so we're actually going to go ahead and replace some gems now. So we're going to go ahead and buy Punishment. So Punishment, we're going to put right over here instead of Flammability. Hello. Punishment. And we just want to support it with Life Tap. So let's go buy a Life Tap. We no longer... Actually, I can just use this one. We no longer use Flammability. We don't need that gem. See you later. So Punishment. And the, the reason why Flammability does not work anymore is because... When we set nearby enemies to minus 20 res, you cannot fluctuate that at all. So there are some pros and some cons to this. Outside of the obvious needing to stand still and or shield charge, your damage scaling on boss fights is limited because you cannot use things like Scorch, which minuses res, Flammability, Elemental Weakness, which both minus res. Um, later on, you can get Exposure, which also minuses res, and that's pretty much majority of it. 
However, on the flip side, monsters who have insane amounts of elemental resistance in a mapping environment do not gain that elemental res when you are standing still, right? So that's where it's kind of like a double-edged sword. Oh, that's a little bit unethical, though. We, we're we're going to just... Well, actually, I can't move it now that it's in my inventory because it's stuck there. So we're just going to leave that alone. <laughs> if you have an early Divine Orb, a lot of the time, a good item to purchase, and it doesn't it should not cost a Divine Orb, but getting yourself a six link is usually a big priority for your clear. Can I actually drop it? Oh, I can drop it. Okay, can I use a wisdom scroll? No. Okay, well. I, I actually, the wisdom scroll is a lot more valuable to me than the divine orb, but I can't use the wisdom scroll. I can't use it. <laughs> maybe, maybe if I'm really... It's not happening. All right, so this boss spawns two little wolves and then Groost. So when Groost glows his spear like that, you want to move to the other side because he's doing a mega shot. You don't want to tank that. That's really angry. Leather belts are very good for this build because they come with base life. Base life is very strong for an RF build since it is uh, your source of base damage for Righteous Fire. Now, let's go ahead and go back really quickly. Um, the reason we're going back is for two reasons. Actually, one reason primarily. Number one, we want to go ahead... Actually, two reasons. We want to activate our Pantheon, which is Rolakesh. By using this Pantheon, we pretty much never have to worry about uh, bleed. Di our natural regeneration will pretty much cover bleed damage, so bleeds are not relevant. The only exception is, one exception, the one exception to this is Corrupted Blood. Now, I also forgot something entirely. Um, there is actually one other really good node to go for, and that would be Prismatic Skin. So before, the, the only thing I would like to do, like I said, is replace Purity of Flesh with Heart of the Warrior instead but now because my regeneration is starting to fall a little short i'm going to go into prismatic skin this is going to give us three max fire res between here here so those are three and then we can get corrupted blood immunity so that's a nice thing you have regret orbs i mean i don't mind like i don't need to regret though i'm okay with what i have i'm gonna take the nodes anyway i'm just letting people know Do I have another keyboard? There's nothing wrong with my current keyboard. What do you mean? Do this yet. My keyboard likes Path of Exile Ruthless. It says that there's too many item drops. Therefore, it's not allowing me to identify more gear until I'm struggling. Let's take a look, actually. Nope, still not working. Maybe in the next act we'll be able to identify some gear. unplug your keyboard that would be no fun though we need to commit to it also if you remember when we were just starting out like i'm talking about level four five remember how we kept coming across that nasty pack of fire and ignite resistance those don't do anything to us anymore because of the chieftain node Punishment, it, ooh, ooh, I'll take one of those. Punishment is also an interesting curse because you don't really feel the effects of punishment until they are sub 50% life, and then you notice a big damage increase. So you see his health, and then it just, right? The reason is because punishment only works when enemies are on low life, which is 50%.
Okay. Maybe it's time to identify gear. Maybe not. You don't swap the purity of fire for quite a bit. Usually, I like to wait for Uberlap. The reasoning on Uberlab is because we take the last Ascendancy node, which it, which I like to take with, um, shit. Uh, I like to take um, your maximum, your highest, is it your fire specifically? It's fire, right? Modifiers to maximum fire is applied to maximum cold and lightning. Until then, I typically run purity of elements. Uh, gee, I would really love to see what these scepters have, but unfortunately, we're going to be holding on to the scepter from Act 2 for quite a while. Okay. We're going to go ahead and now go back to the northern forest. And this is where I like to go into the thicket over here. We're going to go ahead and grab the fireflies. If for some reason you also spelled liquid or sp spilled liquid on your keyboard and you are unable to identify gear, this is a good time to run Vol side areas. Vol side areas actually drop gear pre-identified. Although actually no, because in the patch, I do believe they're stating that now you can identify corrupted gear. So sorry, that's incorrect. So for this boss fight, you want to watch out for the little smoke that comes towards you because it does a lot of damage. Um, Abyssal Scepter is a really good base because it gives 30 Ellie damage. Uh, oh no, I accidentally pressed shift. Okay, okay, don't ever press shift, got it. Maybe it fixed. Oh, well, it definitely did. Um. Okay, if I hold shift, I can identify gear, but it gets really upset. I don't know what's happening right now, but I identified some gear. Hold on. Got it. Okay, uh, not really worth it. We're gonna leave that alone. Okay, let's uh, let's go back. Okay. Just remove the key. Well, even if I remove the key, it doesn't matter because the liquid is inside the little thing that's triggering it, no? Am I going to use this keyboard for launch? Damn right. This keyboard and I were through it thick and thin. I like to let RNG take the wheel, even with my keybinds. I mean, it's at the point where it's almost playing the game by itself. Okay, now that we have all of our fireflies, you need seven fireflies. We're going to go ahead and go over to the Vol City. And we are going to turn them in to Yina. And then we are going to go back to here. And we're going to go ahead and talk to the NPCs for our beautiful skill points. Okay, let's go ahead and pick up maximum fire res. Oh, some new boots. Okay, is it time? Oh no. So if I if I want to identify the boots, okay, we're gonna go for it. Okay. Um, they have prefix open for life. They they technically would be better, but they're not really much better. So I mean, they have a hundred armor. That's already kind of worth it. Um, but I'm just gonna put them in the stash. It's okay. The keyboard is unhappy right now, so. All right. Into the Vol City. No, you don't need to use Shift for one wisdom. Um, well, unfortunately, it's not about me, and it's more about the keyboard. You see, if I try to right-click the wisdom scroll, it, it doesn't really work.
chaos it for 20 ms i could but you know what sure why not let's have a little bit of fun i would not recommend you spend your currency on this uh at all i would spend it on like actually buying gear so we're gonna let the keyboard take the wheel here okay i don't know what uh it would be wrong to do that here Okay, that has prefix open for life. It has prefix open for life. I think, I, I think we could use that. Let's go, let's go for it. I'll take it. I will take it. Whoa, wait, wait. first we need a chrome it. Oh my God. I got it. Okay. Uh, let's get a... Oh, wait, it has a life roll? Oh, it's got a life roll. Right, 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 right. Oh, wait, no, 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 wait, movement speed. Right, movement speed. Okay. Uh, I don't know... Well, I don't have chaos for that, so we'll just do this one. And we'll just put the gems here. What? Oh, it's weird. It wasn't letting me switch. Okay, I think we're good to go. Oh, I should have taken the white point, but it's okay. It's right here. What do you think about using body swap desecrate instead of fire trap? I don't think that that's comparable to fire trap. I don't think anything is comparable to fire trap, unfortunately. I cannot do this yet. I just came back. What is wrong with the keyboard? Well, I was a little thirsty and I had two cups and for some reason I kind of wanted to merge the liquid and Well, you see the cups are to the left of my hand, which is right where WASD is and somehow when I was pouring the water I missed the cup and poured it over the WASD keys and um, Well, it's been a journey since act six. That's really all I'll say Actually, was it act five? I'm not really sure all I know is Labyrinth was very interesting. I can't say I've ever had a Labyrinth experience like that before. Okay, I'm gonna take Corrupted Blood Immunity here. At least we got the sticky keys fixed. That's true. At least the, the sticky keys were the worst. Because what happens is when the sticky keys pop up, the game kicks into background FPS. And my background FPS... Why did it just press Z? It's just hiding my loot. It literally just hid my loot. I watched it. That's rude. Uh, when it kicks into background FPS, I have like... Uh, I have... um. The background FPS set at like 20, so it like maximizes the sticky key and then pulls me to 20 frame rate. One pox, two cup. Not like this, guys. <laughs> Thanks, you just got my YouTube video flagged. No longer child friendly. Okay. If you have a leveled frost blink, you can make this jump. Otherwise, you just kind of go around. Demonetized by chat. <laughs> okay, so we're going across to Arakali. Arakali does pretty heavy chaos damage, so it's actually not too bad that we have that chaos res node I was talking about. Um, for some reason, I'm going to call this ahead of time. There's like a 50% chance there's a tormented spirit whenever I do this boss. I really don't know why, but this always happens to me. You gotta be careful, because Tormented Spirits kind of make her really angry. I 
cannot do this yet. How far is nearby? In this context, I think it's about half the screen. So I'm going to put a portal here. Oh, no ghost. Nice. Okay. You need to blink around on this fight. Dodge the little beam here. Press shift and fight him. Really bad things happen when I press the shift key, man. I'll press shift. I, I, I regret my choice. Thank God it didn't weapon swap me. Okay, moving onward. Is this Act 8, by the way? This is Act 8, right? Yeah, I think this is Act 8. Why does Shift do this for me? You see, um, just, just to show an example here of what shift is actually doing. If I take this camera and aim it here, you see this button right here? If I press this button, my character starts to spaz out. So pressing that, this one right there, that button, that button fucks my character up if I press it. Oh, cool. I'm weapon swapped. As for why it's weapon swapping me, I don't. I, I'm guessing it's because it's close to X. Ah, so it's Shift Z and X that are fucked up. That makes sense. So what does that mean? Well, I'm randomly weapon swapping, losing my weapon. The game spazzes my character out, and X hides all the loot. It's really like playing Path of Exile Ruthless. Holy! I'm self-inflicted ruthless mode. There's probably a drop of water. I wish it was just a drop of water. No. I poured a waterfall onto those keys. I'm surprised it took this long for them to spaz out. I cannot do this yet. Okay, we're going to go ahead and grab... Part of the warrior. Now, you can remove versatility if you want. It's not a bad idea to remove it. I like the movement speed, so I keep it for the campaign and typically respec it after. Do you think players who are new to Path of Exile should pour water over their keyboard in Act 5, or is it better to wait until maps? I think it's better that you level to 100 and potentially get a new keyboard lined up before you engage in malicious activities towards your keyboard. I have a secondary keyboard in your build for RF. Thankfully, RF doesn't require many keybinds, guys. It's okay. All right. So inside the sewers here, there's actually a lot of nasty damage over time. Thankfully, as an RF build, we have a big buffer of regeneration. So we are pretty much fine. We're coming across one of the most kind of like disliked bosses in the campaign because squishy bow builds cannot kite this boss. 
Thankfully with RF, we just go face. We hit them so hard, we break their keyboard too. Okay, and here we go. Careful for the like blood explosions, they do a lot of damage. So in this fight, there's three colors. I forgot what each color does. If you have too many stacks of them, you can click this little valve to cleanse it and it will cleanse all the stacks off you. Green makes you deal less damage. Red makes you take more damage. And I think purple slows you. Okay. So now that we're here, we want to make sure we don't miss it, but there's going to be a little section um, that we need to take before we continue onward. I know that didn't really explain that very well, but I'll show you when it pops up. Should be coming up right around like don't do this yet. now. Is it here? No. Okay. It's a little further then. Okay, it's right here. So you want to go in here and grab this little Ankh here. It's a skill point. Reheat the oven at 220 for 15 minutes and then put your keyboard in for 15 minutes. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to put my keyboard in the oven, but I do appreciate the... Um, I do appreciate that. That is the best option. It very well might be, but my brain's telling me not to put my mechanical hardware in the oven. Put rice in it overnight. What if I told you I'm going to believe in my keyboard? I'm a, I'm a believer in my keyboard. Speaking of believing... Let's believe that this Grinning Scepter is better than mine. Gotta hold shift for it. Oh boy. Oh. Got it. Okay, what does it do? Nothing. Got it. Boy, it's really a journey to identify every piece of gear, man. Oh no, another Scepter. Okay, um, right. So Tolman, you gotta be a little careful. Tolman over here has like some weird explosion that can kind of hit a little hard. So that's the only thing you really gotta worry about. Other than that, it's kind of like a monster defense. They just spawn. And then he pops up right here. That that thing right there. That hits kind of hard, I think. That. See, see how it's kind of exploding? All right. Let's go ahead and check what this... Oh, oh, uh, not in combat, though. Thank you very much. Okay, let's just try to get a quick little... Got it. Okay. Um, Spell damage. We don't want that. Spell damage doesn't work for burning. No, I, I appreciate all the responses you guys are giving me, but uh, I'm not going to be doing any of this during the run. We're committed to this run. The keyboard is committed to this run. What are you looking for on the scepter? High sources of increased fire damage, high sources of burning damage, sources of fire damage over time multiplier or damage over time multiplier. At this stage in the game, I would consider multi, so like fire damage over time multi, at a ratio of about 1 to 4 or 1 to 3. Meaning 10% multi is about, let's say, 30% increase to 40% increase. I'd say closer to 40% because at this stage in the game, we have loads of increased damage and not too many sources of multi. Over here, we're coming to my favorite mini boss in the entire game. So also, while you're here, I'm not going to go inside here. There's going to be uh, dead people in game, of course. You want to go inside the rooms with the uh, the people who fainted. Yeah, that's a better way to say it. Yeah, I think this is where uh, my friends are. No? Yeah, right here. All right, these are my favorite little mini bosses. What I like to do is throw a fire trap at each one. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Cool, that's one skill point, thanks. Okay. Um, here we go. To the Imperial Fields. Does your other shift key not work? Oh! I could just press the other shift key? Wow! That man deserves mod. I forgot the keyboard has two shift keys. <laughs> I only used the left one. I never thought about using the right one. <laughs> I, I never thought about it. I mean, who uses the right shift key? Holy 75% lightning? That's crazy. Okay, let's go back to town. Left-handed people. Really? I guess... I can't really wrap my brain around being left-handed, I'll be honest. Watch yourself. Good. Be well. I'm just gonna skip that. I mean, honestly, though, I, I should take a fire one, whichever has the highest fire res. That's okay. Just gonna delete it. Okay. Um, so now we're gonna go ahead and continue filling in the life. So you have two choices here. I'm just gonna take Juggernaut to make it easier. Um, you can A, break into Templar, or B, you can go down here towards Soul of Steel. And there's actually a C if you just want damage. You can swing across here and grab Heart of Flame, Breath of Flame. I'm going to go for the tanky. So now that we grab those, um, instead of going for Soul of Steel, I think I want to just get more raw HP. So we're going to go into Templar now. Okay. We are going to speed this up. Now that you guys know the basics and you've been following the video for a while, it's time to go a little bit quicker. I cannot do this yet. So I am pretty much going to be skipping majority of mobs, maybe not the blue mobs, I shouldn't have skipped those. Pretty much skip everything other than the blue mobs. The rare mobs I'll kill if they're not tanky, but for the most part I want to get through the campaign here. So let's zoom. Alright, grab that waypoint. Now there's a boss here that we want to kill. If we don't find the boss, because there's two ways to go in this area, we can A, go to the next area, or B, go to the boss. Because I found the waypoint, it doesn't really matter which way I take. I just like finding the waypoint. Because if you kill the boss, you want to be able to take the waypoint to come back. And if you don't kill the boss, you also want to take the waypoint to come back. So we found the boss here, so... Well, we found the next zone, which takes us to the boss. Okay, this guy is super easy. He has like a Scorching Ray. I think you can just tank like anything he does. It's not really a problem. He also has these little beam things and then he just dies. I think there might be a recipe. I'm not sure. Make sure you grab the Sun Orb. You are going to need it. So just going to get rid of these because I have no space. Let's go back to that waypoint we found and zing across to the left. 
So we don't want to go up there. We just want to go this way to the left of the waypoint. I don't know if it's left or south, actually. Okay, left, not south. Oh, blue back. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's true. I did forget about MTXs. Let's switch another MTX. Uh, go into one of the more expensive ones that's really pretty, Transcendence. So this one over here makes it so that when your life goes down, the MTX actually changes. It's actually really cool with builds that reserve life on Righteous Fire because it's actually a different color. Prime example, I'll take some damage here. You can see it. Okay, that might be a little too much damage. No, 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 actually didn't hurt that much. Oh, blue back. Going. Thank you very much. Okay. Here, I'm going to zing across the harbor bridge. Uh, the harbor bridge here is actually where we're going to be fighting the act boss. But for now, we are skipping. Those opal scepters that are dropping very well could be better than what I have. Especially if you got lucky and you dropped a regal orb, it is worth identifying the blue scepters. If you identify any of them with a big multiplier roll, I think it's worth potentially regaling. Or if it has an open prefix, meaning it has a clean suffix, so this or a clean basically if it only has one affix and it's a suffix, you can craft the prefix. So if you pick up a blue scepter, identify and it's like 24% fire damage over time multiplier or 20% damage over time multiplier, something like that. You can just craft fire damage and use that scepter to like almost like red maps. Really depends on the context here of righteous fire versus the new content so in this new patch we're getting tier 17 maps which are going to be supposedly like a step before ubers but also depending on their mods could even be as dangerous as ubers depending on which encounter it is and depending on your investment on righteous fire i do believe you can still hit about three to maybe 4.5 uh, probably not 5 million but you should be able to hit above 3 million damage on reasonable investment before anything stupid, crazy like Mage Blood or Adorn. We're talking about budget here. So I would say, depending on your skill level, you could probably clear some of these maps with a not too much investment. The problem is, is if you're farming them, you're probably gonna want a more single target oriented build, or you're gonna wanna invest a crap ton of currency into your RF build. Now, I'll be able to speak more about this when the league is actually live, and we can actually test out the content. These are actually worth alking. Oh no. Oh god, why did I press shift? No. Uh, I cannot carry this. No shift. Add shift. Pick up off the floor. Do I have any alk orbs? Wait, I don't have any alk orbs? Really? Oh. Okay.
Okay. Let's go ahead and kill this guy. This guy gives us the other orb we need. Oh no, no, oh god. I keep I keep pressing the wrong shift key. That's the bad one. Okay, let's yoink this. Alright, now if we want to go ahead and grab a skill point, we gotta go. Excuse me? Oh no. Um stop. Pop. Fix! Okay, maybe if I just smack the shift key. Fix! Well, shit. I guess that's a thing, too. Okay, um... GG, I'm not trying to spam you. Stop! Keyboard, you're gonna get me banned! Keyboard! Stop, please. You need to work with me, okay? We're, we got one more act to go through. Everything is okay. All right. It's listening. No more touching that button. No more. Okay. So we're going to go to the Lunaris Concourse. And we're going to just go south. Okay. Okay. Why did that just pop up? No, 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 no. Stop, 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 stop. No, 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 no. Okay, this time my game just closed instead. Um, oh, what is happening in my chat? Um, hey guys, we got a problem. It's not just shift that's kind of going crazy. Um, right. Um, everything is, everything is okay? Uh, I just got to figure out how I boot up Path of Exile. Uh, 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 um, unplug the keyboard. I'm trying to do this as fast as I can. Uh, let's see here. Where is my keyboard? Dude. This one. Oh. Okay. Everything is okay. Everything is totally fine. Stay tuned. Everything's great. Okay? That did not fix anything. Okay, I'm going to just pop the shift key out. Right, uh, let's see what we're gonna pop this out with. Pick an account to sign in with. I don't want to sign in with anything. Okay. Now, uh. uh um, oh boy. Um, oh Jesus. Um, uh, I can't see anything. Guys, we have a problem. Windows is spamming my displays and I can't access anything. Uh. 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 F? Is, is it F? Uh. Um. 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 Okay. Stay tuned. Use this as a great opportunity to use the restroom. We'll be right back after these commercials.
have no fear. Everything is okay. Everything is totally fine. Totally fine. Yep, everything is going great. I see no problems. Not at all, not a single one. Test, 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 okay, 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 shh, we're, we're okay, um, all right, what, oh my god, okay, um, um, Hello everyone. How are you guys doing? We're back. I have the most fucked up keyboard set up right now known to mankind. Don't worry about it. This is also a keyboard. We got a double keyboard. I've never used this keyboard before. Um, I'm gonna be honest, switching keyboards mid run is kind of weird here. You guys want to see what my keyboard was spamming me with, by the way? I'll give you a, a little showcase in the chat. That even did that go through by the way? Okay, we're on a new keyboard. <laughs> I was trying to was trying to speed this up. Somehow my okay, so you want to know what happened? Somehow, somehow, I I like I opened the little search bar at the you know like on your Windows taskbar. I opened up the search bar, and I went to go type in Path of Exile, and somehow, it just opened up my display and started switching the display between all of the uh it, it started switching the display of all my monitors how does a keyboard do that how <laughs> how does the keyboard do that <laughs> that's when you guys started saying rip because it started switching all the displays around okay so we want to go not to the grand promenade let's see here we want to go to there it's actually gotten so bad that people were saying, are you getting hacked? I'm actually getting hijacked by my keyboard right now. If you guys are ever curious on letting your keyboard play for you, check out the Corsair keyboard. It's a Cherry Lux. You ever get bored of playing Path of Exile? Pop that sucker in and go AFK. I promise it will clear maps faster than you can blink. It might also buy you some Kerak Vault Passes though. So make sure you unhook your credit card. You don't want to do that. Don't forget to put water on it. Yeah, the Corsair keyboards are highly susceptible to water. If you want them to have a mind of your own, just give them a few little drops. Don't pour an entire thing on them like I did and pretend it'll be okay. It only gets worse and worse as time goes on. First, I couldn't identify gear. Then after I couldn't identify gear, we went to the next stage of, uh, of I couldn't play the game because it kicked me out. And then after that, it tried to take over the monitors. Anyway... Let's get back to the YouTube playthrough. So by now you've entered the High Gardens. You gotta be careful in the High Gardens. There are these evil monsters called porcupines. I think their real name is Goliath. When you kill these monsters, they will explode, inflicting your keyboard with droplets of water. To make sure this does not happen, you wanna make sure you have armor by this stage in the game. Here they are right there.
Okay, from here, you're going to get to Yugol. Yugol is a very heavy damage over time fight. Um, so you got to be careful of the little stuff all around. Now, there's going to be a bunch of mobs here that are going to pop up. Careful, because they can all leap slam you at the same time and do a, a ton of damage to you. So you want to be careful there, right? Here, I just kind of like to circle strafe, the typical. I don't like to sit at a wall because he can charge you and you might get kind of stuck. Yeah, these little bubbles stack up damage over time on you. They're pretty spooky. Okay, and that's a skill point. Let's go grab it. Oh, wow, I can actually move stuff around in my inventory now. Wait. What? Huh? Isn't left click supposed to pick stuff up? My shift key is still fucked up. How? I took it off. It's not even plugged in. It's not even plugged in. Okay, well, no problem. We don't need that anyway. Cause sticky keys are on. Oh my, sticky keys. Even unplugged, this keyboard is merciless. Didn't you change keyboard? I am literally on another keyboard right here. The old keyboard is right here. You can't really see it, but it's right here. Because the physical key isn't what pushes it, it's the input that's wet. I know, but everyone kept on joking saying take the stick like take the shift key off, so I did. And that's when it got really angry. Settings, keyboard, sticky keys. You know, last time I tried to type in my windows, uh, the keyboard took over the stream. I'm a little scared to see what happens next. Okay, um, no, I don't want to log into Microsoft times 14. Thank you very much. Dude, it literally, like it pulled up the pathofexile.com slash purchase supporter pack. It's trying to buy supporter packs. The Kirak Vault Pass wasn't enough. I just looked at my other screen to see all the different tabs. Okay, so here you have the sun and the moon. You got to be a little careful. So this one is actually the scary one. The fire one's not too bad. The scariest thing here is the checkerboard attack. So that those rocks hurt a lot. So the checkerboard attack, this one right here, don't be in the line of the checkerboard. Okay. Wants me to buy the turtle hideout? I want to buy the turtle hideout too. Solaris, Lunaris. Okay. So let me just look here. Sticky, sticky keys. I type in sticky key. Click. You, okay. Use sticky keys. It says off. What? Do I turn it on? On? Use sticky keys. Press one key at a time for... It's off already, so I turn it on. Does this work now? No, this does not. No, no. Okay, let's um, let's sticky key. No, off is off. Well, it, if it was off, then then why is it on? It says it says sticky keys off, but when I click my items, they don't work. I'll tell you what. We'll fix this after the run, because we're almost done. I cannot do this yet. <laughs> the keyboard. I've never had a scenario like this. This is wild. What a great YouTube video. Nothing could have prepared me for this. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> nope, alerts are turned off. I tried to turn off channel points, but unfortunately because of my VPN, it's kind of screwing up my Twitch, so even I can't, I literally can't turn off my channel points, so. All notifications will be played at the end.
As a rule of thumb, if you're new to my stream, when I'm doing YouTube recordings, alerts are off. It's pretty common for most content creators to do this. It would be wrong to do that here. Okay, now we're in Act 9, right? Okay, never mind. Alright. I'm actually going to go ahead and go for some extra life nodes here. So we're going to go ahead and go down here and we're going to pick up Bloodless and Soul of Steel. For damage alternatives, you can come up here and grab this. Why doesn't GG make mapping from level one? Because some people like doing the campaign. I personally don't mind it. I've only done it like 400 times. I have a philosophy where like, I'm not fully against campaign skips, but I don't think that I don't think that it's as how do I say this? I feel that the campaign is a good time to get introduced to certain mechanics in Path of Exile. You could argue the same thing could be done with different leveling uh, stuff, like if they do like bounties from Diablo 3, right? But I think that if players just get right into killing mobs permanently with nothing else, they actually burn out faster. I don't know. I think that the PoE campaign is actually fine, personally. I think the only time I'm ever bothered with the campaign is if I'm playing a really weird build that I've never played before, and it, like, doesn't start until the campaign is ended, in which case you're leveling with, like, really inefficient stuff. But that's what... You know, that's what, have, like, second characters are for. You could have gear lined up for your character. You could have leveling gear. You could have leveling uniques, etc. Campaign is too long. I think it's good. I think most people who quit PoE in the first week are not going to play the game longer because there's no campaign. I think they're just going to do the same thing and leave. What is the new build website? Uh, my website hasn't changed. It's box.net. I'm going to favor life right now. Campaign shows how strong a build is. Yeah, I mean, the more you do the campaign, the more you internally create, like, benchmarks in your head. Like, I have benchmarks in my head, too. I look at a boss, and I'm just used to doing X amount of damage, so I can get a, a good comparison. Now, now, granted, that's not really an accurate comparison for late game, but it's just nice to see. Clearly needed for once in the league, but not for all characters. I mean, sure. 
Your, I mean, like, I would be okay with that. Your first character in the league, you do the campaign, and future characters, you don't have to do the campaign. But I think creating a permanent campaign skip forever is... I'm not, I'm not really for that. Because I just feel like once you start giving the player base stuff like that, they just want more and more and more and more. Sometimes as a developer, you have to kind of draw the line, right? Okay, so up here, we're going to this next boss. And this next boss over here has this weird petrification thing. So I try to stay behind them. I don't know, but the campaign doesn't stop me from playing the game. So. I usually, i probably say I make at least like seven characters, even if five of them are Righteous Fire. The campaign never holds me back from anything. Obviously I am, you know, just a person, right? not speak for everybody. So inside here, we have another lab trial. Since uh, my time has been sabotaged a bit by uh, our keyboard, uh, I'm gonna skip this one and just kind of zoom a little bit more, trying to make up for some lost time. I want to take a sip of water, but I'm scared. <coughs> I'm terrified. <laughs> Okay, so on this fight, there's these, like, little spinny clouds here. The spinny clouds do, like, physical damage over time. They shouldn't hurt too bad, but they'll pretty much cancel out your regen. Boss goes invisible. I like to just kind of wait for the boss to come to me and reset some fire traps. Sticky key situation after. You were too beautiful Seriously? For this ugly world. <laughs> sticky keys, man. What is going on right now? <laughs> okay, let's turn this in for a skill point. You oh, you're not. You have you? Good luck. All right. You have been good luck. Now we're gonna get this little bottle See ya. that we got from doing the first area here. And we're going to use this to go fight an optional boss here for another skill point. I'm going to switch MTX as well. Let's go ahead and pop on this one. Lightbringer. Another nice MTX. <clears throat>
Does MTX give more damage? There's actually bugs with some skills where certain skills' hitboxes were bigger, but uh, that's not the case with RF. Okay, so this boss, pretty straightforward. It has like a slam. I kind of just blink behind it when it's going to do it. It's this one right here. A lot of chaos damage over time here. When you have these little little debuff on you, you got to run around and then it drops off. So for this here, you kind of just have to follow the boss a little. Don't go too fast. If you go too fast, you got to wait for the boss. Okay. There's the slam. Just gonna move away. Then it goes invulnerable. You get a little bit of an ad phase. Try not to sink into these because I think you. Oh, you just get slow. I thought you took increased damage. Let's go grab our skill point. Okay. Bloodless, big HP. Now we're gonna go ahead and go over to, is it the refinery? Is that what this place is called? I always forget. This boss is kind of annoying um, that we're coming up to, but we should be fine. We got 3k HP. Refinery. Now we're starting to get some density. Our Infernal Cry kind of picks up a little. This guy has like a giga strong slam, so you want to be careful on this guy. Pay attention. I think it's that right there. It's like an explode around him? Yeah, I think that. And then he has that too. See you later. Come over here. Grab your little item. Um, and then I think we just literally go here and we go fight Trinity. Okay, new MTX because this one's blocking my mini map. Divine. Divine's pretty nice. I hate Divine actually. Just kidding. Oh, just went in a circle. I definitely don't need two life flasks, so if I ever found a silver flask or a ruby, I'd definitely replace a life flask with a silver or a ruby. Here's a cool one. This is called um <clears throat> This is called Betrayal League. Betrayal is a very big part of gearing for pretty much all builds. I, I would say for Righteous Fire as well, we get really good modifiers from Betrayal. I'm just gonna give an example of how to do this because this is such a good 
gateway into getting gear above random gear you identify. So it's in between crafting and gear off the floor. So it doesn't really matter what you click here for the purpose of this video. So I'm just going to click execute and then I'm going to click bargain. So we got a nice ring here. This ring has a suffix open or this has an unveil suffix. And then this is a helmet here with a prefix. So an example of some cool stuff here. This helmet could roll plus two to level of area gems. So that hit melee, also a hybrid life, which is okay. When you click this, you permanently unlock this craft for the remainder of the league. Now, this ring could unveil endurance charges or frenzy charges on the suffix. That's very good. That's like really solid. That would give us physical mitigation, endurance charge on kill. Chaos res is not bad either, but this is pretty solid for sure. That's like a ring I would gladly use. It even has prefix open for life. So that's an example of how the gear from Betrayal is very strong. Also, for some reason, I'm spiking up to like crazy latency. Uh, that never happens to me. What did this keyboard do to me, man? Keyboard is uh, really sabotaged this, this run, huh? Gosh. Why? I mean, I feel like when my PC shit itself, I'm now having some hardware problems, <laughs> which is causing the latency to spike. So I'm not really sure, man. Strange for sure. Maybe it's actually GGG's end. So many people are playing before League Start. They just want to get a head start, and that's why the latency is pooping itself. And then in this area, it's going to be perfect. 100%. Oh. It's not perfect. Um... Right. Uh, maybe if I take a portal, it'll refresh it. Yeah. It's just the zone, guys. Yeah. See, now we're good. See, it's, you know, no problem. All right, now I'm going to go for Soul of Steel here. I mean, Last Epoch is easier to understand, but why limit yourself to one game when you could play both? Looking at the skill tree is a hard pass. That makes me so sad. I love overwhelming skill trees. It's like my desire to play video games. Oof. Very heavy lightning damage here. I mean, it's pretty simple. If I if I break it down for you, what is happening? I have this giant ring around me. You see it? It's called Righteous Fire. Drains my life and deals damage to enemies around me. Then I have another skill called Fire Trap, which is my single target. I lob fire traps that deal burning damage. My choice of movement skills are Frost Blink and Shield Charge. Shield Charge synergizes well because I charge through them while burning them. And Frost Blink is another way for me to kind of like quickly, you know, uh, breach the gap if I need to like jump in front of the guy's face or run away. Then I have this button here called Infernal Cry. When I press it, mobs explode and take extra fire damage. And then I have Blood Rage, which is a self buff that I use to give me charges to make me do more damage and go faster. So you, you can choose to kind of break it down to be as simple as you, as you want. This guy is kind of like the Malagaro we fought before. He has pretty similar skills, does the same slam. Oops. Instead of taking the portal, I took my portal. Uh, 
that's kind of not all oh, those colors are the opposite never mind Okay, Doge right here is a little interesting. Depending on how tanky you are, you can just face tank her. Otherwise, you have to hide behind the pillars. Problem with hiding behind the pillars is we kind of kill them with RF, so you should just be able to deep her. Okay, now we get to fight Trinity. Trinity is kind of a spooky boss. You want to watch out for this chaos damage and you don't want to stand in those blood pools. Our regen is starting to kind of lack and that's mainly because of that keyboard situation we had a while ago. I haven't really been picking up any gear. And now my shift key is still a little messed up so identifying is a little strange for me but it's okay we're almost done with the campaign. Trinity is a combination of all the bosses we fight in this, like, those three little mini ones. You do not want to tank that ball at the end there. It will throw the balls during, um, uh, just when they're active. You want to move out of the way because it travels in a projectile. And also those little scorpions that pop up do a lot of damage. Alright, we're in the last act. Now we're going to talk to Bannon here. Bannon is going to uh, tell us to go do some stuff. Cool. Now we are basically rushing to, is it Oswari for our lab? We want to get our last lab point so we can actually go ascend. And then we can get explodes. That's when the chieftain really starts to take off. I do remember I was going to go into Templar here. We'll, we'll do that after we uh, pick up the rest of Soul of Steel, I think. These Catawba Heralds that are here, they're the big guys with the wings. They hit really hard. Got to be careful for them. They're like physical damage brutes. Okay, let's go ahead and go back to... So by doing Osuary here, you'll get the last lab trial. We're just going to go Ascend right now. So f I'm five levels under. It's a good chance I can get smacked here, but we'll do our best not to. Remember, our gear is really bad. It's basically from like Act 2 to Act 4. So should be a fun fight. We one point off Soul of Steel. Oh, I probably would have done one of the quests to get a skill point and then would have ascended. Just to get that extra bonus max res and armor. Have you eaten yet? Oh yes, I fed my keyboard. We are connected through the life force. Okay. 
Okay, here's the golden key. Let's swing around here. Where there's a golden key, there Both of us are hydrated. Okay. Let the day dawn golden with possibility. So at this point now, 11,000 armor, 79, 77, 77 max res. Soon it will be 80, 78, 78. I should not die to Azaro, but if he crits me, there's a good chance one of his big hits will kill me. So I'll just still play this pretty defensive, although we're starting to get a little tanky. So, when he gets a little lower, like now we're going to hit one of these to turn off his charges. That way he gets no charges. That's kind of how the mechanic works there. Remember, it's different like every time. I'm going to stay away from that box just because of something, some silly combination that gets me killed. Don't want to risk it inside a labyrinth. I don't know. That's, I just call it charges. I don't really know exactly what it's called. If you're talking about like the Azaru thing. He has these little shiny golden charges and uh, the more he has on him, the more damage reduction and speed I think he has. When you click it, it cleanses them, but he'll start to gain them back. Okay. So this one has the statues. Uh, these are pretty easy. You just want to like, I just throw a fire trap at them every so often. You don't want their health bar to fill up. Nobility is a lie by the goddess. That's it. What ambition. Wisdom is the offspring what is the benefit of showing terrain on the overlay? It's easier to navigate. I cannot do this yet. I don't look at my screen. I look at this dot. That's it. Everything else is peripheral vision. I think that's the right term to use. That weapon is garbage. Yeah, we picked it up in Act 2, and, um... I mean, it's just stuck with us for so long, we may as well just continue the run with it. run. Absolute ethicality here. An aspirant can afford Okay, here we go. Emperor must keep the road is the most devious trap of the all. Okay, 
dodge that. Frost blink out. That green thing will teleport you. See you later, friend. Um, okay, the sticky keys is like being really weird right now. Let's go ahead and just click that. Click over here. Where is our righteous fire? Six quality. Thank you very much. 16% damage over time. It's actually a better weapon. We can just craft fire damage on it and we have a weapon upgrade. Now, we're going to take Hinakora Death Fury, which creates explodes. I meant landscape transparency. Oh. And everybody just likes different things. That's really about it. You would be wrong to do that here. Okay. We're going to go ahead and go over here and craft fire damage. This one here. So I want one green, so I'm going to just go ahead and jeweler, where are my jeweler orbs here? Okay, and now we want one green. My shift key is kind of messed up. Normally you would use shift to like, well you guys know, you've seen me do it, but my shift key is like super question mark right now. Okay. As an easy way to check the damage, 26k, 22k. Huge damage upgrade. Okay, we now have explodes. This is the beginning stages of the chieftain kind of starting to scale. We can amplify these explosions later, which you can see here. By adding simple, Ignite Proliferation on our gloves with Eldritch Currency, or Fan the Flames Jewel on a Cluster Jewel, or Barracks Respite, but that's not for this video. Also want to take a moment to say that I really enjoy Vegan's Minecraft Shed. Kind of reminds me of my day one uh, Minecraft playthroughs when it's nighttime, and you got to make that really quick shed so you don't die. I don't really like to empty my inventory when I'm doing these campaign runs out of accidental habit of spending currency from my main tabs. I'd rather have everything in my inventory to make sure that I'm not accidentally spending currency from my tabs. Here you can see the constant explodes happening. It's very, very nice. Okay, I'm gonna switch back to regular. I actually really like regular RF. Is that weird? I'm a big fan of it. Hmm. Let's go through here. Okay, this place here is comparable to the other place we were at before. Remember where we did Innocence when I got one shot? This place you can also level in if you feel like you're a bit behind. It's got the same, like, super density at the end. And going to it, there's a whole bunch of density. Like, here's a rare plus, uh... <clears throat> on top of the rare, there was a blue pack. Also, if you saw the item that dropped the six sockets, 
Those are definitely worth picking up and vendoring. You get some jeweler orbs for them. for the one shot not really he just did his big slam you're supposed to dodge and i was showing people about animation canceling and animations canceled myself into a one shot you know typical streamer gets one shot for views nothing to see here there was like the big blue pack then here's the other big blue pack and then here's another big blue pack right here okay now this guy here actually does pretty heavy physical damage so i would personally try to dodge it that that swipe is pretty mean shouldn't kill you if you have armor right now but it can be pretty mean but didn't we have more armor oh it's because we had our granite flask on before that one you want to dodge as well and sometimes you'll also do this like beam attack you want to dot yeah that that hits hard i don't know how hard this guy hits let's do it for sign okay don't get hit by that guy that guy's mad too you pretty much just move around go back to the boss you know, wait for him to attack and then switch across. I cannot carry this. Now that you okay, um, I don't really care about the flasks here. Sulfur, actually, sulfur is pretty good, uh, but my inventory is kind of messed up. Oops, misclick. Oops, misclick. All right, cool, thanks. Uh, let's see. Good. Remember, we do this. It would be wrong to do that here. So we could go fight Katava, and the video would be over, but let's go ahead and peek over here and go kill um, this other boss really fast. I always forget what their name is, but they remind me of, I think their name is like Valenta or whatever. They remind me of Vienna Sausage. They have Vienna Sausage, you used to eat them when I was a little kid. I think they're absolutely dreadful for you, but I, you know, as a little kid, I just liked them. I wanted the little sausages. What are the chances that this is insane? How much? Wait, is that a fizz weapon? Oh, no, no. Uh, there's also this thing here. I don't know what reliquary does there. I think it's maybe respect points. I'm not sure. Oh, here we go. Right over here. Valenta. Yeah, it's like the same thing. I think my shift click is not letting me click the waypoints either. Oh my goodness. Can't wait to figure out how this thing... It literally says it's off in my windows. But maybe I'll show you guys after and you just laugh at me because I can't read. Okay. We are coming close to the end of the run. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Remember, if you did, please feel free to hit that sub button. It really goes a long way. And if you guys have Amazon Prime for any reason and you're not using it, you can come over to Twitch and use that Amazon Prime as a Twitch Prime and subscribe to your favorite Righteous Fire streamer, twitch.tv slash pox. So from here, we've got this Valenta guy. He does a lot of heavy physical with some degen. Uh, you just want to stay out of the beams here. Then they go into a fire phase when they lose 30% of their life. You can probably just tank it. You shouldn't really have a problem if you have the term. It's a girl. Okay, they. You gotta be careful for them.
That should be a skill point for us. Thank you very much. Now we talk to Innocence, and Innocence says, let's go. So we're going to go. Mm, we're going to go here because we want to go into Templar. I'd recommend doing this betrayal and fighting Verici in his Minecraft uh, shed again. The main reason is you get a lot of XP and because the loot can be really good. So a good example of the XP, check my XP bar here, it's 49%. I'm just gonna click random things here. 56%, look at that. In fact, these are actually sick boots. These boots have uh, movement speed with life regen and they unveiled maximum life, look at that beautiful pair of league star boots right there we're gonna leave those on the floor though maybe vegan can take them back or uh verici could use them to run faster and make a new shed Okay, Katava, where are you? So also do remember at this point, I talked about a guard skill a little while ago. You could absolutely use one. And in fact, you probably should. I'm not using one just because I'm lazy. Uh, at this stage with my armor, Molten Shell is probably the way to go, but Steel Skin also works. Guard skills are basically instant cast abilities you can use to soak up incoming damage. Um, I could I could actually lie and say the reason I'm not using guard skills is because newer players won't really know what to guard against, but uh, that would that would not be true. I'm just lazy. Okay, here we go. Perfect time for the fire trap level. If you want some more damage on Katava, you could run efficacy instead of ink AoE for your righteous fire, but your fire trap's gonna do a lot of the heavy lifting, so I don't really think it matters too much. Here we go. I shall strike you down. Okay, so careful of the fire breath. You want to sit on a corner when they do the fire breath. Careful for the damage over time here. It does a lot. Then we go back into the uh, heart mode here. Now these guys do a lot of damage. If you get lucky, you'll get an explode proc and one shot the heart. I almost just died there. Holy. Okay, one, two, three, out. Gonna move on to the other side here. Okay, for this one, you just wanna be away from those. Oh, I actually still got hit by one. Okay, that's a ball that will periodically hurt you. So if you walk into it, it's gonna hurt you. Back into heart phase again. I like using my granite flask during this phase because I feel like it's harder to dodge the mechanics of the attacks. Oops, popped my uh, sulfur flask a little too early there. You can also preset fire traps for when Katava's invulnerable like this and then they all pop. Okay, cross blink over that attack. Katava is down. Nope, just getting fire breath. I'm going to run to the opposite side here. 
Okay. That's it. We are done. You are officially ready for maps in Path of Exile. From here, what I would recommend you do is check out the newest content I'll be posting with updates to this build, following the live stream, checking out what I'm doing because I'll be playing RF Chieftain as well. Do note that you want to unlock um, Capture Mervale, the returned here with a Divine Vessel. This will provide you Freeze Immunity, which will allow you to drop Purity of Elements and pivot into Purity of Fire. When you do this, you want to also make sure you have your Uber Lab, so that way you are scaling maximum Fire Res, which buffs all of your resistances. But that is pretty much it for this video. What else you can, or another thing that you can do from here, is when you go to the Oriath Docks, from right over here. Once, I don't know if you can do this now or it's after you turn in the quest, but we'll just go ahead and turn it in as well. There's gonna be boots over here with movement speed. Not boots, sorry. There's a, a little font you can click for recipe. This is like 20 or 25% movement speed. So it's definitely worth clicking that so you can get the movement craft. Then going on over here, we're just gonna turn in this quest right over here, which gives us our two skill points. And then you can type slash passives to see if you missed any passives. You should have a total of 24 passives. If you type this before you kill Katava, it will not show any that you're missing. It'll just show you what you have. That's pretty much about it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget you can catch me streaming live every day, especially League Starts at twitch.tv slash pox. Hope you guys all have a wonderful time in Rayclast.